Welcome back to Fighting Indian Football, folks. It's a different look. Yes, we are outside on the press box level here at the historic Tomato Bowl. Aaron Swink, Matt Montgomery, and Ryan Travis here with you for the first countdown to kickoff of 2023. Gentlemen, Happy New Year. And Matt, looking forward to another great year. And tonight... It's going to be a hot one, Jacksonville and Sulphur Springs. It's just been a brutal summer for everybody in the state of Texas. And uh, it's going to be an interesting game tonight from the standpoint of both teams having to manage the heat, as everybody is tonight. Some games are kicking off at 8 o'clock. The two coaches talked this week for Sulphur Springs. Uh, Coach Faircloth and Coach Holman of Jacksonville decided we'll keep it at 7.30. But there are going to be scheduled breaks tonight to let the players come off the field, let their heart rate come down, get some fluid in them. And so the game may last a little bit longer tonight, Aaron, because of those heat breaks. Well, you have to take those those uh, health concerns into into account when it is this hot. We've even seen uh, newspaper articles this week talking uh, talking directly to the fans. We've had Jacksonville trainer Jason Krause uh, giving uh, you know, his tips and, and guidelines even to fans watching the ball game here tonight at Tomato Bowl and. Ryan Travis, I know that you know about this heat because you've been setting up I do, yeah. our new our new set. This is fantastic. Talk just a little bit about uh, this, and of course, our first year live on JISDlive.com. Talk about that uh, partnership a little bit that our fans can uh, look forward to experiencing this year. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's a very positive thing. I think it's really exciting to be on JISD Live this year. And, and this setup kind of came with that partnership because we get to work with Lee Trailer and his audio video team now. I mean, I've gotten the, you know, I've been fortunate enough to work with him on basketball and soccer this past year. And I think basketball two years now and um, really enjoyed that. Excited to be streaming on JISD Live. And uh, I'm, look, I'm really excited to see and looking forward to the future of, about what, what else we can do with this platform. Yeah, yeah. We're hoping to expand the, the JHS sports experience for fans and parents, grandparents, and sometimes may not be able to make the game, but they can uh, get on jazzdlive.com or you can go to the YouTube channel and you can catch a lot of uh, a lot of the sports that hopefully uh, that we're going to be able to bring. Yeah, we're really looking forward to that all season long, but of course it starts in the fall in Texas with football and Matt the Fighting Indians looking to take the next step in the second uh, season here under head coach Jason Holman and uh, going into another season in this tough District 9-4A, Division I. Uh, going to be a lot of big matchups coming down the road. But, of course, tonight in the first these first few ball games, all about figuring out who you've got and kind of who goes where and, and, and a lot of that to be done for Jacksonville because there's not a lot coming back. Well, offensively, it's uh, you're talking about replacing 85 to maybe 90% of your offensive yards from 2022 with graduation. So that's going to be the big challenge for Jacksonville. Uh, only one offensive lineman's coming back from last year. Defensively, Jacksonville has a few more starters back on that side of the ball. But, you know, one of the issues that has been for the last few years is the number of players for Jacksonville that has to go on both sides of the ball. So that's going to be something that Coach Holman will have to manage as well. Last year, you mentioned three and seven in a district called the District of Doom for a lot of good reasons. And this year, for sure, because Chapel Hill coming into the season, I think ranked number three in a lot of polls. Kilgore's in the top ten. Lindale's like number 14 or 15. So there's three teams in 9-4A Division One that in your district. So to prepare for that, this schedule is, is built around trying to trying to get ready. You're playing a Sulphur Springs team tonight that went seven and four in Coach Faircloth's first year at Sulphur last year. Uh, Wildcats beat Jacksonville in Sulphur Springs last year by a score of 21 to six. But that game just really got away from Jacksonville. Uh, you look at some of just the overall statistics, 32 minutes of possession for Sulphur Springs, Jacksonville 16. One turnover for Sulphur Springs, four for Jacksonville, and that explained that ball game. But the biggest statistic that jumps out to me in this game tonight as far as players coming back, the offensive yards coming back from this game last year for Sulphur Springs, 225 for Jacksonville, just 27 yards. Wow. So that's, yep. uh, that's a pretty big difference in experience coming in. Now, of course, 
As always, Jacksonville always seems to have somebody that you didn't expect to step up and produce touchdowns and yards and all those things. So I'm looking, I'm looking for that. I have some guys that are on my mind right now that I think could be those guys that will step up. Yeah, and they'll definitely have to do that. As uh, again, we're talking about a lot of new faces for Jacksonville. Certainly, new faces uh, in new places. Uh, it definitely for the Fighting Indians. But you know, one thing we're talking about Jacksonville playing Sulphur Springs, but you know, Jacksonville and Sulphur Springs, they're both playing the Heat tonight. Yeah. I think that's a that's that's the third opponent, isn't it? Yeah. I mean that's that's the that's the, what everybody's going to be uh, going against. But I really think that if you look at the scrimmages, Jacksonville scrimmaged Kaufman here at Tomato Bowl, very even. Kaufman picked to finish fourth in the district that Sulphur Springs is in. Sulphur Springs has picked second. Their first scrimmage, they played Linda, one of Jacksonville's district opponents. We got a lot of commonalities here. And in the two quarters that most of the scrimmages, they do two live quarters. Uh, Sulphur Springs beat Lindale 28 to 21. Now, you can't put total stock in scrimmages. A lot of things happen. Coaches look at everything. Sometimes they don't show a lot of things. But that's kind of a gauge right there as far as like opponents, common opponents uh, of how their scrimmages look. Historically, this is the 10th time these teams have played. The most memorable play, the game that between Jacksonville and Sulphur Springs was in 2010, that playoff game at Rose Stadium, well, what, 56 52 Sulphur Springs. Yep. Uh, but Sulphur Springs leads the series overall five to four. The district that Sulphur Springs comes from is Anna Kaufman. I mentioned them, Paris, Nevada Community, and Maybank. And of course, Jacksonville's district, you know, Athens, Kilgore, Chapel Hill, Palestine, Lindell, and Henderson. Uh, size wise, both teams about the same size. Uh, Jacksonville 1258 turned into UIL, Sulphur Springs 1240. So, I mean, we're talking about the same size schools playing against each other, but this is the Sulphur Springs team coming in tonight that has a lot of experience on the offensive side of the ball. Defensively, not as much experience. We could see a shootout tonight. If Jacksonville can get their offensive rolling, it's a different kind of look for Jacksonville. Uh, Coach Jason McClendon, the offensive coordinator, is speeding up the offense. You'll see a lot of tempo, up-tempo for Jacksonville. Did really well in the Kaufman scrimmage running up-tempo. That's how they moved the ball down the field and scored. Uh, but again, as you said, Aaron, they're fighting Mr. Heat. Yeah, we'll absolutely. We'll see how that goes up with up-tempo. It's kind of hard to go up-tempo when it's 102 outside. That's right. Well, and I had an opportunity to talk to Coach Holman uh, a few weeks ago, and one of the things he talked about with uh, with the offense is as often as as the opponents and the officials and the and the conditions will let us, we want to go as fast as we can. Uh, keep keep the opposing defenses you know on their toes and, and and so conditioning obviously plays a big part in that and so they'll get their first real test here tonight we I don't know if we have a thermometer down on the field but I would I would I'll tell you I would yeah. guess yeah you of course you're gonna be down there the the human thermometer uh, but we were we were kind of estimating in the pregame it could be 115 to 120 on the turf when this thing kicks off. Yeah, and that's why the officials are going to, you know, use their discretion. And I think there will be a break at the end of every quarter for sure for a few minutes. But if it's, you know, if it's in the middle of the quarter and there's a long drive going on, or both teams do a long drive, I should say, they don't want to interrupt the tempo of the game. But the players will need maybe to come off the field and get their heart rate down. So, but uh, let's talk about some of the players. Uh, let's start with Sulphur Springs. Again, 7-4 and four last year. They got beaten the first round of the playoffs in Coach Faircloth's first year. By the way, Coach Fair Faircloth came from Port Nature's Grove. That's right. 11 years and very successful. Went to the playoffs, I believe, every year. Every year. Yeah. So the man for Sulphur Springs is the quarterback, Brady Driver. Uh, last year uh, in this ball game, he was 13 of 21 for 145 yards and a score for the season. Driver threw for 1,337 and seven scores. Uh, in the backfield, Malachi Rowland is back. He torched Jacksonville last year for 96 yards on 24 carries and a score. He's back 5'6", 140, but don't let that fool you. He is a scat back. Um, they have both of their leading receivers back. Does the Sulphur Springs, they had a sophomore last year, was a Skylar Lewis. He had a couple catches, Jackson Harris back. So as I said a moment ago, 227 yards of total offense coming back for Sulphur Springs. For Jacksonville, just 25. So quite a difference there. For Jacksonville offensively, of course, another McCown at quarterback. Brady McCown, the junior, steps in. Coach Holman very high on him, uh, loves his leadership. He can really flick the ball, Aaron. He can get it down the field. And then the two scrimmages, he's thrown some, thrown some beautiful touchdown passes. His number one receiver, Jermaine Taylor's back. Has three Division I offers at wideout. He's back. 
that's a good thing. Also, uh, you've, you've got um, uh, Drew Dials, a junior. I'm looking for him to really step up. He had a touchdown catch last week in the board scrimmage. Junior Ryan Arrington. And watch Brendan Richards. He is a junior. He, he is a guy that was very deceiving, very thin, very skinny, okay? But he can fly, and he has great hands. And, of course, back at the H-back position, this is one of those four offensive starters back is Ryan Walker. He's another weapon that Jacksonville has that can catch the ball uh, coming out of that H-back position. Again, the question for Jacksonville offensively, the offensive line. Uh, that they've got to find that combination of guys yeah. that that will work. Lost a lot to graduation. If they can give Brady McCowan enough time to throw the football, it can be lethal. Uh, you got Jaden Boyd in the backfield running the football, and we got the transfer from Frankston, Reese Hicks. Yeah, you'll see a lot of him. Really so, looking forward to yeah, six to one, seeing him. Six one, one eighty five. Both those guys in the backfield, but. Then there's a then there's kind of a combination of running backs that you'll see that that I, I was really impressed with in the scrimmage that got some some carries like Aditi Maris and 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 Gaskin and, and just some of those guys you're going to see I think you'll really be impressed by them. Defensive side of the ball, no question, the strength for Jacksonville is their is their upfront defensive tackles. Uh, you got Ryan Walker's back, you got Jaden Boyd's back, and you have the spotlight player of the week for us tonight yep. is junior Michael Miles. And as you can see, 83 tackles last year, uh, 58 solo tackles. He was in on the 83. Uh, just, a, just a tough, hard-nosed sophomore last year who was the newcomer of the year in District 9 for you guys. That's saying yep. a lot because that was a very defensive district last year with Chapel Hill going to the semifinals, uh, Kilmer going to the quarterfinals, Lindell going too deep. Michael Miles is really uh, going to be a fine back there. Yeah, and I, I was going to say I lost count of how many times last year he was our either our Austin, Austin Bank defensive player of the game or he was among our postgame honors, Michael Miles. So really looking forward to seeing him work again. Yeah, and uh, you'll see uh, Trent Powell will move from the secondary and roll up to linebacker. That's a big change for Jacksonville. Reese Hicks and Zeke Whitaker. Uh, I'll call them really two returning starters, although Hicks was at Frankston. He was uh, definitely their playmaker. And then, of course, Zeke started last year as a sophomore. So you got some experience for Jacksonville on the defensive side of the ball, and by golly, they're going to need it tonight because it's a very potent Sulphur Springs offense. Yeah, speaking of Sulphur Springs, uh, Matt, let's take a look at the matchup between these two, and Ryan can roll that up for us. As Jacksonville, we talked about coming in, or, or last season rather, finishing with a 3-7 and seven record and 2-4 and four in district, just missing out. And then Sulphur Springs with that 7-4 and four record. They finished third in that district. Uh, but what stands out to you in terms of this matchup? Well, the points allowed. I mean, you can see at the bottom for Jacksonville, they allowed 40, almost 41 points last year. Uh, you, you, you can't do that. I mean, you've got, to, you've got to keep those points down. And if you look at Sulphur Springs, they gave up half the number of points. That explains why they were 7-4. So, you, and I think that's where I think we'll see the biggest improvement this year for Jacksonville. I think the defensive side of the ball, uh, Bradley Gandy, the defensive coordinator, plugged some holes. He's got some guys that he's moved around. I, like I said, I mean, they may prove me wrong, but I really liked what I saw in the two scrimmages, especially against the run. Bullard couldn't run the ball on Jacksonville defensively in the scrimmages, and neither could Coffin. That was very promising. Yeah, and like you said, for the for the scrimmages, maybe the, maybe those live quarters aren't exactly. Uh, you know, uh, apples to apples in terms of how a game would go. But you do like to see those bright spots, and it sounds like that the defense for Jacksonville, the, the war party defense, was a bright spot. Got to got to uh, do a better job on uh, defending the deep ball. That's the three scores Bullard had in the scrimmage last week. One, one time it was kind of fluky. The Jacksonville kid clipped his heel and he fell. And then you had – uh, a couple of missed assignments, and that's how Bullard scored their three scores was on deep passes. But running the football, very impressed up front with Jacksonville defensively, and they're going to have to get pressure tonight on driver, the quarterback. He gets rid of it quickly, so you're going to have to scramble and you're going to have to get to the football. Yeah, of course, this Sulphur Springs team has been known for a long time for being a team that goes quick on offense, that the quarterbacks that get rid of the ball quickly. Uh, was it Tyreek Rollinson oh, yeah. uh, who kind of started uh, that? He was on staff. I don't know whether he still is or not. He was yeah, on staff. They won with the state his... championship in 2008 with that's him. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That NASCAR offense. And really ever since then, obviously, 
coaching staffs have changed, but the the mentality is still there that this is a this is an offense that likes to move the ball and they like to go quick, and so that Jacksonville defense is going to have to be ready. For well guys, I hate to leave this wonderful set, but I got to get down to the field. Yeah, we got to send you down there for I the gotta check the temperature for the temperature report. Yeah, I got to check temperature. Yeah, I check make sure everything's right. Yeah, and I got to get my hat on. That's right. Okay. You got to. A lot, of, a, a lot of people probably tuned in, didn't realize who you were, because I, I don't know that I've ever seen you. I, I heard I was going to get a ticket, but I broke a city ordinance. I don't have my hat yeah, on. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. We're going to have Jacksonville Mayor Randy Gorham uh, in a few weeks with us. We'll ask him about that and about the city ordinances related to your hat. But yeah. when we come back from this break, we will be joined by Jacksonville High School Principal Dr. Ben Peacock. He'll talk about... The start to the 2023 school year. Lots of exciting things happening all around the district. Looking forward to that. And, Matt, we will check in with you uh, after smoke signals back down on the field. You bet. All right. Dr. Folden, Dr. Westbrook, Dr. Stocks, and their dental team at All Smiles provide a wide range of dental services. This includes cleanings, fillings, crowns, bridges, implants, and cosmetic dental care. Call and schedule your appointment at 903-586-0741. Bill McRae Ford has been serving East Texans since 1976. They can help you find the best deal on a used car or if you're ready to purchase something new. Open Monday through Saturday. Bill McRae Ford. Come see us. Congratulations is Jacksonville's source for a full line of awards and engraving services. But we don't stop there. You'll want to check out our examples of creative personalized gifts too. Congratulations also serves East Texas as a promotional products dealer. We are passionate about sourcing just the right items. With our laser capabilities, we can also design and install acrylic signage or graphics. Want to see samples of our work? Go no further than the tomato bowl entry. We're especially proud of the arrowheads. Visit Congratulations Showroom or website soon, and let's make something amazing together. Since 1953, Hubert Glass Oil has been serving East Texas the finest automotive fuels and lubricants. Hubert Glass Oil Company, the clear solution for your business. The honey barbecue chicken strip sandwich is delicious. It's got that barbecue flavor, the cheese melts on top with that Texas toast. You look at it, your mouth starts watering. It's my go-to sandwich. The honey barbecue chicken strip sandwich, that's my all-time favorite. I'm Matt Montgomery. For over 40 years, my business has helped people manage their money and organize their financial life. I'm a registered investment advisor with the state of Texas and chartered financial consultant. Whether you need portfolio management or comprehensive financial planning, I can help you. Call me for a free consultation. Welcome back. You are watching the countdown to kickoff here on JISD Live. I want to remind you that the First part of our countdown to kickoff is sponsored by Micah Hoffpower of Texas Farm Bureau Insurance. We want to make sure and thank Micah for his sponsorship. And now we bring in, in the spotlight, literally, uh, <laughs> JHS Principal Dr. Ben Peacock. Dr. Peacock, thanks for joining us. Absolutely. My pleasure, Aaron. Yeah, and of course, Ryan Lee. of course, there at the end of the table as well, we're joined by JHS Media Guru. Mr. Lee Trailer. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for that title. Bob. Yeah, yeah. So we are. As the wind picks up. That's right. Yeah, it blew down our sun sunshade there. So it did do that. If we're that if we're did. squinting, uh, folks, that's the, that's the issue. But Dr. Peacock, we're glad to have you. And I think Mr. Trailer had a couple of burning questions. Well, uh, important, well, for, ready, guys. Yeah. important questions. Yeah. Uh, certainly this first one. Um, you know, there's a lot going on at the high school, and it's a big role that an, an event like this one involves the entire community. But um, I would be remiss if I didn't ask, who's the best third-string tight end in the history of JHS football? <laughs> that, that sounds like a loaded question, Mr. Trailer. <laughs> That's why we started with Mr. Trailer. <laughs> you know, right. you, need, you need that third-string tight end for, you know, PAT situations, double tight end situations. There's a guy that wore number 88. I don't know if anybody ever wore it in a better fashion. Played uh, third string tight end fall of 1999. Guy by the name of Peacock. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, very, very integral to the team back Strap, in the day, guys. Scrappy gym rat, I've heard. You know, That's right. you know, effort was the thing. You know, talent sure. not really there. Right. The guy gave 100 tips. Athletic prowess? Yeah, we had other you. skills. We checked the other sure. boxes. I got you. All That's right. right. All right. That's right. Well, Dr. Peacock, we, we're about two weeks into the school year here. Uh, just let our, our 
viewers know how things are getting started here at JHS, how, how things have been going these last few weeks. Yeah, Aaron, I think I've heard from several teachers and students that it's been such a great start. Um, you know, we our enrollment is up to almost 1,400 kids, which to my knowledge, and I've been around a little while, uh, that, that's, that's the biggest enrollment we've ever had by far at Jacksonville High School. So that's a, that's a good challenge to have. Uh, been a great start. You know, you're always dealing with challenges on a daily basis, but when you have great kids, great students, and you have really exceptional staff members, from classroom teachers, administrators, counselors, secretaries, custodians, maintenance workers, all the way down, uh, you tend to be successful. So we've got just a really, really high quality group of grown-ups in the building that there serve those students. Yeah, and it sounds like a, a lot of buy-in. Obviously, I, I know a, a big theme for for the district the last few years has been the idea of thrive at JISD, and it, it sounds like that's 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 a I don't say top-down, but but everybody kind of has that mentality. Would that be would that be fair to say? Sure, and, and you know, people ask all the time, you know, what is culture? Jacksonville High School has such a strong culture. You call yourself the JHS family. And really, we talk about this a lot as a staff. What is culture? And culture is just people and behavior. So you can read all the books you want about business or the school business, but really culture comes down to the quality of the people that are working in the organization and the daily behaviors and decisions that undergird um, what the students learn. And so that's, I, would, I, would, I think that explains a lot of the success. And of course, we have a lot of work to do always. Uh, but that culture is very strong. I think. Yeah. Well, uh, and and like I said, it, it, talking about all the all the people that make that happen, and and obviously you see that on a, on a Friday night like this. I mean, a Friday night in the fall uh, in Jacksonville, especially, is 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 a really uh, important time. Can you talk a little bit about? Um, just how much work that it is to make sure that an event like tonight comes together uh, that I mean obviously we are here in the historic but newly fairly newly renovated tomato bowl just a beautiful facility uh, just talk about the work that goes into events like this and just um, you know what 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 makes a Friday night in Jacksonville such a great experience? Sure, you know, Aaron, I, I kind of equate it to game workers, the people that make this train go literally and figuratively, right? On a Friday night, you know, it's it's really if we're doing a good job, the fans aren't really gonna notice us. It's kinda yeah. like a referee. So, you know, from about forty to fifty game workers, you know, t about ten school administrators, uh, all kinds of volunteers, band parents. FFA students and parents, FFA alumni over in the visitor section. There are hundreds of people, literally, that come together to make this happen. So I appreciate you acknowledging that effort. Uh, we sure as heck work really, really hard yeah. to make it as positive as possible for fans. I mean, when you, yeah, when you walk into Tomato Bowl, you know you're somewhere special, and 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 that doesn't just happen, right? I mean, there there there's got to be. I think I've already used the phrase, but there's got to be buy-in. There's got to be uh, some pride from lots of different people, and, and I think you've got it here for sure. We have it here in Jacksonville. No doubt. You know, we have all these multimillion-dollar stadiums going up all across the state, but um, I don't think anybody that's been here would, would ever doubt that this place is at the top of any list of the best high school stadiums, not just in Texas, but in the whole country. Yeah. Well, I want to bring in Ryan Travis again. Ryan, of course, JHS alum, and I know that you uh, have uh, set under some great, uh, some great educators here yeah, in yeah. JSD. I want to talk about one in uh, in particular. Um, yeah, I and, mean, and, I, I've, we saw Rob Goins post. Yeah, I think everybody saw that. I think it had like. 1,500 oh likes gosh, or something yeah. on Facebook. Um, but it is Jan Goins, 50th year as an educator here in Jacksonville, I believe. That's correct. Um, and, you know, she's impacted so many people around the community. Uh, what does it mean to have such a tenured teacher on your staff? Well, it's our honor that she's coming back to, to work at Jacksonville High School. So somebody like Miss Goins, you know, what makes her special and this kind of peek behind the curtain here, it's not just that she's been so good so long. It's that she does what it takes on a daily basis to stay good for so long. So the little yeah. things, learning about technology, helping fellow teachers, sharing her wisdom with others. Uh, she continues to work to be good. She's not just resting on her reputation. Yeah, well, she has certainly uh, been been quite an example. And I mean, you can obviously you can go back 50 years and we could we could have all kinds of people in here who have been touched by 
Ms. Gowen, and of course, that doesn't even, we haven't even mentioned her, her pie-making abilities <laughs> uh, yet, but obviously. It's also worth pointing out, in addition to being just the educator that she is, I don't know anyone more committed to JISD and to Jacksonville than Jan Gowen. Yeah. So she is the number one fan of every single organization at the high school and spends a ton of time and effort to, to support those and to recognize those groups. Yeah, and, and just pours into the pours into the students i know so much and we, we you know, just guys, wanted to we, make sure she's putting up posters today of individual students yeah, that are football players in the hallways she's constantly working but she she draws attention to others and likes it to not be reflected on herself so she's she's really the, the best in so many ways yeah it's lucky to have her absolutely i wanted to make sure that we got her rec the recognition just a little bit of what she deserves obviously we could be here for you know all, all night yeah we could <laughs> we could the jan going podcast and uh I, I i might be i might be in for that especially if she'd bake us or make us a pie uh but going back to just kind of the academic uh side of things just in general for jhs i know uh last year was a big year in terms of success and it's not all just about sports there was some big uh, academic success in the UIL is that is that correct it is Aaron, and I'm, I appreciate you mentioning that you know for the first time I think in 21 years maybe 22 I should ask Miss Gowen there you go uh, <laughs> of course she leads our UIL academic program but we won UIL district for the first time in a very 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 long time so that that to me is an, an achievement that stands really just above about just about anything else and so a lot of hard work from those sponsors those teachers great group of kids we could not be more proud i think when she called me and told me i screamed uh like a teenager i was so so pumped up about it yeah that's great and and obviously um it, it, it is I mean, it, those students need as much uh, uh you know recognition a, 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 as any athletes or any other uh, students in in Jacksonville, so I'm glad we had an opportunity to to recognize them. Um, I think Ryan, are we are we getting we may be getting a little bit close here, we, but we are. We still got about three minutes. But uh, so. but, but I wanted to ask you um, as we were talking about just academics and success in Jacksonville. Can you give the, the viewers? Uh, an idea of how many students or maybe the percentage of students uh, that graduate from Jacksonville currently are, are going to either college or trade school sure, and, you know, and pursuing uh, higher education. Sure, you know, at the end of each spring semester we have a, a, a college day that, that Sarah Stevens, our awesome college and career advisor, puts together. And we usually have about 98% of our seniors get accepted to a college. And of course by that you mean a four-year university, two-year junior college, trade school, um, about 98% go, or get, get accepted. And so of those, I'd say about 10% go to a trade school. So we could not be more proud. You know, I tell parents and students all the time, our primary job uh, is to provide a pathway for our students to build their own unique future. And that future looks different for different kids. Right. You know, not everybody's cut out for college. Some kids need to go to the military or want to go to trade school. But whatever that future is, it's our job to help them get there, particularly their last two years at JHS. Yeah, well, uh, absolutely. Go ahead, Lee. good thing to add on to that, to that is what we're doing right now is one of those opportunities. That's right. My program, we have students here. We have students behind the camera. We have students working this game. And it's an incredible opportunity for a high school student to be able to do something like this. So in addition to your traditional route for students, at JHS we offer an incredible array for students to find where they want to go. Yeah, absolutely. So and you can you can find that 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 place you fit in, and and you're going to get a lot of great support. We've heard heard about it here tonight from all the uh, from Dr. Peacock talking about just all the great people that are going to pour into these students and. We certainly appreciate Dr. Peacock for, for all you do, and thank you for stopping by. And Ryan, I think it's about time that we're going to make a transition here, but wanted to, again, thank JHS Principal Dr. Ben Peacock, and uh, enjoy the game. Go try. Appreciate it, guys. Thanks for the time. Thank yeah, you very you much. Yeah, you bet. Thank you. That was JHS Principal Dr. Ben Peacock, and we are going to now uh, take a short break, then we will send it over to Smoke Signals to hear from Coach Jason Holman, this is Fighting Indian Football on JSDLive.com.
Dr. Folden, Dr. Westbrook, Dr. Stocks, and their dental team at All Smiles provide a wide range of dental services. This includes cleanings, fillings, crowns, bridges, implants, and cosmetic dental care. Call and schedule your appointment at 903-586-0741. Welcome to Smoke Signals, everyone. I'm Matt Montgomery, along with Athletic Director and Head Football Coach Jason Holman. Fighting Indians ready to kick off the 2023 season at home against the Sulphur Springs Wildcats. Coach, it's been a month of practices. You've had a couple of scrimmages. Let's just start off with where you feel your football team is right now as Sulphur gets ready to come in. Well, you know, we've worked very hard. Uh, the kids have put in the work. We had had a good summer. Um, came out of the summer, we felt like in, in good condition. We were able to teach, teach some things that we weren't necessarily able to teach last year. Feel like we're we're much further ahead of the game, obviously going in our second year than you know than we were last year with everything being new. Um, we've had good practices. Uh, we've had scrimmages. With, I feel like we've gotten what we needed out of them. You know, we may have not been on top of the scoreboard in certain cir- circumstances, but scrimmage for us is more about us mm-hmm. and getting in sync, uh, both offensively and defensively, and discovering you know. Who's going to be our start? How you know? What of our what are our best eleven to get on the field? What are our options? Um, we feel like we've take handled all that through the course of the scrimmages. And speaking of starters, uh, you have four offensive, four defensive starters coming back. You got a lot, a lot of linemen to replace up front. Uh, that experience factor, coach, uh, coming into your second year as a Jacksonville head coach, th- that's something that obviously will come. But I, I saw some really good things in the scrimmages from some of these players that don't have any varsity experience some of them really stepped up nicely yeah and that's part of the combination we've got to figure out you know who are, who are our best five and in each position uh obviously not having the varsity experience uh outside of dakota whiteley who, who played uh, in a backup capacity last year um yeah it's going to be new for them but we're feeling good about the progress um we just got to continue to work continue to improve and uh, have things ready to go Friday night. Of course, offensively, uh, Jaden Boyd's back running the football. He'll also play defensively. Jermaine Taylor had a great junior year, a lot of uh, Division One offers already. Uh, so you do have some offensive uh, you know, packages around those two guys. But Brady McCown steps in at quarterback as a junior. I know you're very high on his leadership skills and, and some of the things he can do. But one of the things I, I wanted you to talk about is Offensively, our fans may see some differences as far as like the speed of the offense getting and getting the playoff. Yeah, we've worked in a package. And we've got the capability to do whatever we need to do when we need to do it, but we've worked the capability of being a little faster, operate a little faster at times. We feel like it's to our advantage to do so, uh, particularly maybe after you know a big play or a first down. Just trying to add some stress to the defense to help open up both the run game and the pass game, and hopefully we can take advantage of misalignments or missed assignments by doing that from the defense. And so I think you'll see at times you'll see a faster operating offense than what we've done in the past. Um, we're a little wider. We're spreading the field a little bit more than we've done in the past uh, with the idea of trying to get, you know, spread people out, make them a little thinner. We're hoping that it, that it benefits us and opens up the run game. And uh, if we can get to the second level now, you know, when those safeties are removed because they're so wide, maybe we can stand a better chance of popping some big runs. So um, that's that's some of the changes you'll see offensively. Coach, defensively, uh, particularly in the Kaufman scrimmage, I thought um, saw some good things, saw some good things in the Bullard scrimmage defensively. Michael Miles comes back as the – he was the defensive newcomer of the year last year, 9 4 Division One, and he um, really is a strength. Jaden will be next to him at linebacker. you got other guys – up front defensively, your, your defensive tackles, uh, pretty strong up front. Bowens is back, um, but you, you really look strong up front, and you also have some experience in the secondary. And what I mean by that is you got Reese Hicks, who transferred in from Frankston, who played a lot there, and uh, and, and also uh, Zeke Whitaker, who started last year at safety as well. Yeah, we've got we've got some experience coming back. We've got some new faces there too in the secondary. You know, I felt really good about how we've defended the run in the past two two scrimmages mm-hmm. that we've had. Um, we're so much, like I said, further ahead. Uh, defense is all about occupying and doing your responsibility and occupying gaps. And we're a lot more conscious as players now about how that needs to be done. Um, we're a lot more efficient with getting there 
where you know you want plays to uh, to look and fit the same on a continual basis so that you get repetition at doing it and you and you can rely on where your teammate is and you know who's your help inside and outside when you can rely on that and you got confidence in that then that all helps uh, in the secondary we had a couple big plays you know kind of fluky plays given up the other day all of which can be fixed with technique and, and a little bit of eye discipline. We're really working hard this week to try to rectify some of those big plays where we tripped in one, slipped in another, missed a tackle. Um, but we got to limit those. You know, we can't give up big chunks of yardage and expect to be successful in the long run. One of the things I know that you want to see in scrimmages is not just the physical aspects, or are they in the right position, or they is their technique good, but also just the mental part of the game. You know, I mean, what's going to happen when you get down? What's a big play? What happens to you on the next play? And I know that. Uh, Kaufman looked pretty good. Bullard, a little bit of a struggle. Some of the things maybe happened during the scrimmage that didn't go Jacksonville's way. And I know that that uh, you talk to the team a lot about the mental part of the game and not just the physical. Yeah, we've got to be composed at all times. Um, we talk a lot to our kids that at the end of the day, it's not about who we're playing. It's all about us. It's, that's got to be our focus. That's got to be our concentration. You've got to have a one play at a time mentality. Uh, we don't want to play the game watching the scoreboard. You know, I mean, all that's in the past. Uh, the end of the game's in the future. We can't control the past or future, but we can control the now. And that's where we want our focus to be on every play so that we can execute and uh, do the job we need to do. Sulphur Springs coming in, Coach, uh, coming off a pretty good year. Seven and four went to the playoffs, obviously, and a uh, 21-6 uh, win last year uh, at Sulphur Springs. They bring a lot of starters back. They have an unbelievable quarterback in Brady Driver. Uh, and their running back, uh, uh, rolling his back as well. So this is a very high-powered Sulphur Springs offense coming to Tomato Bowl. They are. I mean, we've got a, we've got a big task in front of us. Um, you know, I mean, kind of a similar situation last year. First staff, first year staff for them, first year staff for us. And there were some things that, that transpired in the first game last year that, you know, just you can't explain because it's first game with new, new coaches. First games are always weird. And they all are. And um, – I expect them to be, you know, just like I'm saying that we are at this point. I expect them to be a lot more polished. Uh, obviously, they got experience coming back where they, where they made it, didn't have so much as far as what they were doing. Um, it's going to be a tough, tough contest. You know, we want to fight and we want to stay in the contest. And our, our objective is to get the game in the fourth quarter and then let's go win it. Let's, let's have the mentality that let's get to that fourth quarter and then it's just going to be toughest man wins. Well, they, they averaged over 25 points a game last year, and with a lot of the same guys coming back, they, they hung 28 on Lindale in that first scrimmage. You know, in a 12-minute running quarters, two of them, 28's a lot of points. So they can score. So what, what do they do offensively for our fans to watch? Well, they're spread, very similar to us. Mm -hmm. um, they run the ball. I mean, they're, they're not just throwing it all over the yard. Uh, they do some RPO stuff where they, they kind of sucker you with the run and then try to throw it over your head. Um, they're just efficient. You know, the quarterback operates well. He's composed. He's in control. Um, they fit well up front. Offensive line, is, they're effective blockers. And they've got really good skill around them. So we've got to make sure that we're taking good angles. We're tackling. We're, we're corralling them. And we're not letting them out of the gate. We want to make them drive the ball and have to execute and not give up big chunks of yardage. What's their defensive look? Defense, they're in basically a 4-2. I guess you could say 4-2-5. Um, you know, they, they, they don't have so much uh, experience coming back defensively as they do offensively. And we're hoping that's kind of to our advantage. Uh, I feel like just from watching the scrimmages, they're probably a little bit behind defensively compared to the offense because of that. Mm -hmm. Because they got a lot of new faces in different positions. But, you know, they're aggressive. They're athletic. They, they fly to the ball. We've got to make sure that we're on point and uh, we're attacking them. We talk about this every year. First games are always weird. Strange things always happen. We saw it last year. Um, being at home at Tomato Bowl on Friday night, you know, you got a lot of young guys coming up, ready to, you know, first night, Friday night at Tomato Bowl. Talk about the mental part you coaches are working on this week with them to prepare them, like, as I said earlier, not just for the, you know, the physical part, but also how to handle that first game. Right. So, in the, you know, in the scrimmage against Bullard, we went through kind of the process, although it might have appeared silly to the fans, but running our kicking game out on the field, you know, because I want them to understand the flow of the game. You know, you need to understand that, hey, anytime we got a third down situation, 
uh, that you know that's not inside our 30 or anything like that. We've got a punt alert, and the punt team needs to be prepared to start moving down to the sticks. So that if we decide to punt, they're on the field. Uh, obviously, if we if we score, we need need to follow that with a PAT and a kickoff unit. And, you know, if they happen to score, then we need to follow that off with, follow that up with kickoff return. So, just the flow of the game, uh, I felt like it was important to get that aspect in the scrimmage. And, you know, we had a couple of hiccups where some people weren't where they needed to be at times. So That's why you run those out there. That's yeah. why you do it. And, of course, we'll go through that whole process in our Thursday workout where we kind of kick the field and go through things like a game. We'll do it again. Um, but anything you can do to help kids understand this is where you need to be, you know, have your helmet, be ready to go, have it on your head in case your number's called and you run out on the field and you're not looking around for a helmet that's laying around. Things like that. And then outside of that, like I mentioned earlier, it's just that uh, one play at a time mindset. Not not getting consumed about what happened while, you know, three mm-hmm. plays ago you can't control. Not what's gonna happen potentially in the future, but what we gotta be in the now and focus on what we're doing at that moment. So let's talk about keys to the game. You know, you know Sulphur with their high powered offense, a decent defense. Um, what will you do to to create situations for your team to put them in a position to win? So what are the keys? I mean, I think, you know, and it's kind of the same thing every every week, but I think, you know, particularly in this first game, I think the kicking game is going to be a huge factor. You know, we gave up a – we had a muffed punt last year uh, that gave them really good field position in a certain situation. You know, things like that we can't allow. Uh, we want to do our best to win that kicking game phase. You know, obviously, from an offensive standpoint, we want to be able to move the ball effectively and score points, put points on the board. Um, and then defensively, like I said, we've got to limit their big play potential. We've got to make sure that they earn every single thing they get. And that, in turn, forces them to execute, you know, to perfection. And at that point, we're hoping that, you know, at some point during that execution, we have an opportunity for a turnover. Or we can get a third down stop, get off the field, you know. So. That's, I think, kicking game is going to be vital, and mm-hmm. uh, um, we're putting a lot of effort and focus into trying to be efficient in the kicking game and win it. Jacksonville versus Sulphur Springs as the 2023 season kicks off at Tomato Bowl. We'll be streaming starting at 6:35 on JISDlive.com for head coach Jason Holman. I'm Matt Montgomery. We'll see you next time right here on Smoke Signals. A little Indian night. It's also a little, little charmer night. So that uh, those festivities are going on right now. It's always a, uh, a great night when football season kicks off. Of course, last night uh, the season kicked off across the state of Texas. A lot of Thursday night ball games. The team Jacksonville plays next week, White House. Uh, they were defeated 55-33 um, by North Forney, a 6A school that – is not picked to win their district. They're, they're like picked toward the bottom part of the district, and they beat White House, so Jackson will be heading over there next week. But tonight, it's Sulphur Springs, a good football team, team that went 7-4 and four last year. So much coming back on offense. Uh, defensively, not as much. Jacksonville, on the other hand, has more coming back on defense than they do on offense. So it's going to be an interesting thing tonight. Like a lot of first games, Aaron, it's going to be a game decided – by turnovers and who makes the fewest mistakes, penalties, and those things you always see in the first game. I mentioned in the pregame earlier, last year in this ballgame, Jacksonville had the ball half the time offensively than Sulphur Springs. They doubled them up on time of possession, did Sulphur Springs over Jacksonville, and Jacksonville had four turnovers, and Sulphur Springs only had one. Yeah, you so got to gotta win that turnover battle. And of course, I don't know how many times tonight we'll use this phrase, but I think you said it in smoke signals as well. First games are always a little bit weird. They just are. It's just something about it. Uh, it's just a combination of you're just not in the swing of things. It's the first time you have a routine. You know, some of you may have done it last year. You got maybe half your varsity team hasn't played on Friday night yet. 
And so, you know, it's all new to them. They're going to come out of that, the, um, the headdress down there in the run through for Jacksonville for the first time, and those nerves kick in. And so those are the things that you got to overcome, but uh, really feel good. 26 seniors on this Jacksonville varsity. That's a lot of good, solid leadership. And so looking forward to some of the juniors and a couple sophomores up on the varsity that will be making their debut tonight. Aaron, let's go through the starting lineups for Jacksonville. Uh, the left tackle is uh, Braden Richards. He's a senior. Left guard, Alex Para, a sophomore. Center, Alex Ramirez, a senior. Calvin Boyd, the sophomore, gets the start at right guard. Dakota Whitley, the only returning starter on the offensive line. He's a senior. He's at right tackle. At wide receivers, three of them. Jermaine Taylor, the uh, senior with three Division I offers. He returns as the leading receiver for Jacksonville. Uh, junior Trevor Arrington and junior Elijah Whitaker, who started last year as a sophomore. The tight end slash H-back is Ryan Walker, a three-year starter for Jacksonville. In the backfield, we'll see several running backs, but Jaden Boyd, the senior, will get the start. And at quarterback in his first start on the varsity, junior Brady McCowan. Defensively for Jacksonville, starting at defensive ends for the Fighting Indians, J uh, junior Jordan Dorsey, and also Dick Cameron Devereaux, a senior at nose. Raphael Foy, a returning starter. Drew Diles, an outside linebacker, a junior. Watch for him on the offensive side of the ball. Trent Powell moving up from the secondary as an outside linebacker. He's a senior. And we talked about Michael Miles, the defensive newcomer of the year, 9-4A Division I, coming back at linebacker. He's a junior. Jaden Boyd, a senior, also at linebacker. And your secondary, the safeties are Elijah Whitaker and Reese Hicks, both juniors. And the corners, Detavius Kincaid, a senior, and Brendan Richards, a junior. There's your starting lineups for Jacksonville offensively and defensively. Right as the pregame hype video gets started. I never get tired of seeing Darren Baxter hold up that trophy oh, in 92. Goosebumps. Yes. Hard to believe this is the fifth year of the new tomato bowl that we're starting tonight. And here it's, comes the tribe. Sorry, Matt, right no, behind good. you. It is Bring time. Bring them out. New helmets, Aaron. Yeah, looking sharp. Jacksonville all in blue. The blue helmets, the spear, the white face masks that pop. A good look. The Sulphur Springs makes their way out of their run through on the far side. The road whites for the Wildcats. Good crowd in. Absolutely. So far, Matt. Good crowd tonight. Let's go, buddy. Everybody will be lining up on the sidelines. Go! For the national anthem, will be paid by the Jacksonville High School Band. A lot of this choreography. You know, you got to kind of get used to it if you're this is your first night on the varsity. I like to watch some of the sophomores and juniors come out there with wide eyes as they look up and see. Uh, this is not your freshman JV crowd up here. <laughs> this That's right. Is, this is a few more people. So Jesus Nunez, the senior kicker for Jacksonville, will also be doing the punting, getting everybody lined up. So here's the national anthem going to be played by Johnny Barrier's JHS High School Fighting Band.
Best time of the year coming up right here, baby. Starting the high school football season. Not a better place to start it than historic Tomato Bowl. First game played here in September 1940. Of course, the redo back in 2018 and had to play all those away games, Aaron, and uh, I, I don't miss those days. I love being here at Tomato Bowl. Yeah, I could, uh, can do without Rose Stadium for a while. And Bullard. Yeah, that's right. We did have the one game <laughs> at Panther Stadium and Bullard as well. Yeah. That's right. So teams lining up now. I didn't get a chance to uh, check the officials. The officials were a little bit uh, early. They came out really early and they left early. And so I didn't get a chance to ask the White Hat if they did the toss beforehand or do we have a mystery here. So let's go, Ryan. Here we go, buddy. So captains now will come out. We'll spot those for you here. It's Jermaine Taylor, Jaden Boyd, and Dakota Whitley, the three seniors for Jacksonville, representing the Fighting Indians. How about a Zach Thomas for Sulphur Springs, the guy that just got in the Hall of Fame. He's wearing number zero there. Also number 21, Bo Loggins, one of those defensive linemen. He's a senior. And number 23, that's Diamon Gotcher on the defensive line. Not sure if Bo's any relation to Kenny. Ah, I don't know that either. Sometimes you just make jokes for yourself, as Reed Kerr would say. And that's okay. We'll laugh at you and with there you. There you go. Well, so Matt, while we have while we have a chance, want to Jackson forgot the ball, by the way. Yeah, they actually Sulphur Springs won the toss and they deferred to the second half. Sorry, Eric. Yeah, go sorry, ahead. I'm sorry to step on your lines as well. Want to make sure we acknowledge our countdown to kickoff sponsors yes. again. Let's acknowledge them. I'll tell you, the first half of our countdown to kickoff, we want to thank Micah Hoffpower and Texas Farm Bureau. For all your insurance needs, contact Micah Hoffpower at Texas Farm Bureau. In the second half of the countdown to kickoff, our great friends at Dairy Queen on South Jackson, Gene Brumelow, JHS class, 1967, and his daughter, Ann Brumelow Farmer, class of 2006. Thank you to our sponsors, both of them, Micah Hoffpower, Gene, and thank you all for sponsoring our countdown to kick off our new set. Yeah, absolutely. Just unbelievable. Ryan Travis, Lee Trailer, you guys are amazing. Yeah, we, we've been just talking about how how much fun the pregame set was and I mean, really looking forward to this season here on JISD Live. I mean, I can remember we couldn't even get on the air on the radio. Yeah. We couldn't even get everything hooked up. <laughs> <laughs> Dropping back for Jacksonville for the opening kickoff. Jermaine Taylor, Reese Hicks. Kicking off for Sulphur Springs. Number 20, Eric Rodriguez, the sophomore. So getting set, ready to go. Football season is here. The weather may not be saying it's football season, but, you know, this it's, it's kind of crazy. Your, your, your first uh, practice was July 31st. I've never heard of a practice starting in July, but that was the first day that teams could practice, and here we are still with the heat. We're set to go. Glad you're with us here at Tomato Bowl. As the Fighting Indians entertaining Sulphur Springs, here's your kickoff and here with your play-by-play, -play, here's Aaron Swain. So Rodriguez has the ball on the tee. We are ready to go. The 2023 season is underway. It's a short kickoff to the far side field, a cleanly cut back. And a, I think it's not, Walker. Not much going. It was Walker, the up man, as he tried to make a cut and make a few men miss, but Sulphur Springs swarmed to the tackle. I'm not sure anybody worked harder in the offseason and in the summer to get ready for this season than junior quarterback Brady McCowan. I mean, he absolutely wore himself out getting ready. Very smart player. He is fourth in his class, and the junior class is Brady McCowan, and he'll get his first varsity start tonight for the fight in Indians. He'll be joined in the backfield by the senior, Jaden Boyd. Jacksonville with the ball to start this drive on their own 37. Looking forward to seeing Boyd get back involved. Missed a lot of time with injury. Did Jaden, but ready to go. First snap of the season. The handoff is to Boyd. Straight ahead he goes, and he's out over the 40 and stacked up at about the 42. I don't think there's any question that Jacksonville would love to come out here and establish the run. I mean, they got some great receivers in Taylor and Whitaker and Brady can throw the ball, but 
What do you want to do? You want to keep the ball away from Brady Driver of Sulphur Springs and get some time-consuming drives. That's a good start for six yards, second and four. This time McCown pitches to the right side. Boyd going to try to get around the end and spins off one tackle down to the 47-yard line thereabouts. He got a first down. And he will move the chains for the first. Bill McCray Ford, first down of 2023. Couple of carries, 11 yards on those two carries for Jaden Boyd. He'll check out the junior transfer in from Frankston, Reese Hicks in the backfield. This time, McCown hands off to Hicks. He's going to Jermaine run a reverse to Taylor, and he's still going as Taylor cutting back to the right side, and finally swarmed as. Looked like he was going to make something out of nothing there, Matt, but Sulphur Springs quick to the ball. Well, he ran about 35 yards and lost three. Yeah, he sure did. Yeah, reversing his field, and Hicks took the handoff from McCowan, and then here comes Jermaine around for the reverse, and it didn't have anywhere to go. Good stay-home pursuit by Sulphur, second 13. So now Hicks with a – Quick pitch from McCowan and not much going at all for him as he makes his way out to maybe about the 42. And I'll bring up third and long. Yeah, that'll go down as a pass right there from Ray Brady McCowan to re six, but he just kind of took it and flipped it to him about a yard away. I mean, he could have reached out and handed it to him. Just kind of flipped it. Hicks checks out, Boyd checks in, third and long for Jacksonville. So now McCowan gonna look to throw. He's under some pressure, hit hard, uh, and that's incomplete over everybody. So that'll bring up first punting situation of the season. We'll see Jesus Nunez. That's the struggle right there, Aaron. We saw that in the two scrimmages. It's protection for Brady McCowan. Nathan Andrews, the junior defensive lineman, number 34, came in and tattooed Brady. Can't let him take those kind of hits. They're, uh, you know, for the, over the course of a ball game. And, again, that was one of the keys to the game coming in. Can they protect Brady McCown? They did not there. So Jacksonville after getting one first down. Here's Jesus with a punt. So Nunez looking to boom one. This is a low snap. Sulphur bringing pressure. And That's what you want to do. It's a good one. A little soccer yeah, style. Right at the 30. Angle it away from the punt returner. So Sulphur Springs with their first offensive possession. It'll start at their 30 on the left hash. So Jacksonville defensively up front. Raphael Foy, the Cameron Devereaux, and Dominique Bowens, returning starter from last year. Also Hinton, Zadarius Hinton up front. So Jacksonville's defense with their first shot of the season is the pass to the flat and a big gainer around the end there. Skylar Lewis. Yes. Lewis, who yep. is sophomore last year, had a great sophomore year. Yeah, he sure did. Yep, and he's back as a junior, and you can see why they want to get the ball in his hands. He'll pick up seven, second and three, pushes the ball just outside the Sulphur Springs 30. Five yard line, we'll call it second and second and four for the Wildcats. So they'll go with two receivers on the left side, one on the right, one back, and they're going to keep a little RPO and a deep ball and a big sulfur first down. Number one cardinal rule do not look in the backfield. That's gonna that that was the struggle in this in last week against Bullard in the scrimmage. You've got to keep on stay on your guy. I don't care that you looks like a you stay on him. You don't look in the backfield and that bites Jacksonville. That pushes the ball deep into Jacksonville territory to the fighting Indian 31 yard line first down sulfur. So Brady Driver has the cats driving five wide. This time empty backfield, right side caught and Little gainer to Malachi Rowland. Yeah, that's going to be Lewis. Check that. Is yeah. that Lewis again? Yeah. Yeah. Just a little bubble screen, just isolating him out there. Lewis, about 6'2", about 185, a long receiver. They like to get the ball in his hands, obviously, as he's caught two on this drive. So that gives Sulphur now a second down and two to go. Football at the Jacksonville 24. So 8.50 and counting here first quarter. Sulphur Springs driving toward the north end zone. Driver going to pitch. That's a hole right there. Call it. Got to be a hole. Oh got to be gosh. a flag. No flag and a big gainer. They got it. They finally threw There's the flag. The late, 
Yeah, the late flag. It, it took some lobbying by the Jacksonville coaching staff, but Zadarius Hinton had a great pursuit angle. Well, and all of a sudden, he didn't have a great pursuit angle. You know why? Because he was held. <laughs> because the offensive lineman yanked him in the backfield. Yep. So they're going to get sulfur there. So that will back the Cats up a little bit. A little bit of lobbying from the guy in the black hat down yeah. there as well. I mean, it was just – did I mean, you, I think the official just wanted to make sure that he saw it. He was going to throw did, the flag. I just tried to help him a little Did you bit. get some air there, Matt? It looked like you might have <laughs> gone airborne. Yeah. I did. I had to kind of get out of the way right there. I was, I was looking for the I was looking at the flag, and I got to pay more oh attention. I don't, want, I don't want to get Mike Cummins down here, if that's, you know what I'm talking that's about. That's right. That was ugly. Yeah. <laughs> so the penalty second takes second. away the gain. It was from the spot, actually, so it's second and ten now for Sulphur. So the Wildcats go back to their three receiver look, two on the right, one on the left. Driver rolls right, got all kinds of time, going to run it himself. Got first down yardage and more. Down into the red zone goes Driver. And, and Driver isn't just a passer. I mean, last year in this game, he was the second leading rusher. He had 54 yards running the football, so he can do that. He can get out of the pocket. He's bigger and stronger than he was last year, obviously, from that – Going from a junior to a senior and with that experience, going seven and four over in the, in the season. Threw for over 1,300 yards last year as a junior. But he gets the first down for Sulphur Springs. They get the penalty yards back and more. Football now in the red zone at Jacksonville's 13. Down check inside. that, 17. Sorry, Matt. Down inside the eight-minute mark. Another hold, hold, hold. pitch out to the flag. There it is. Looking for the hold. There's the flag. It's just obvious. I mean, I, I mean, Stevie Wonder could have called that. <laughs> I mean, sorry for the old reference there. I hope people remember Stevie Wonder, but that was clearly a hold as Jacksonville's number six, Tavius Kincaid, the senior corner, really played that bubble screen nicely. And he just got held by the outside receiver. And when Lewis caught the ball for Sulphur, Kincaid just was just wrapped up. So that's the second hold on Sulphur Springs. Again, one of those first game penalties you always see. So that'll back up the Wildcats, make it first down and from the spot, first down 17. Gets them out of the red zone, the Jacksonville 24. So first and First and Bullard. Indian defense looking to make a stop here on a drive that has gotten as far as the Jacksonville 13. Now move back on the penalty yardage. Yeah! And there is... Busted him up! A busted play as the Jacksonville defense... Gets to Lewis for a big loss. <laughs> well, Roland, the running back, took the pitch from the quarterback driver and when he was going to be a reverse, and it looked like Roland did not turn the right way. And, boy, Lewis ran right into him. And then Jordan Dorsey, the Jacksonville junior defensive end, he was right there to yank Lewis down for an even bigger loss. So now it's, it's, uh, it's probably second in Tyler now. <laughs> uh, a little bit further. At least Whitehouse. Yeah, it looks like about 23 to go. Second and 23 for Sulphur Springs. Two receivers each way for Driver. He's going to look to the left side and overthrow everybody. A little miscommunication right there to his junior receiver, Lewis. Kincaid for Jacksonville really didn't have to do much on that as the ball wasn't even catchable, even if Lewis would have not wrong, run the wrong route. Or I guess I should say if the quarterback had to throw the wrong pass route. So, nevertheless, it's incomplete. Third down, way long, third and 24. Sulphur Springs has to get down to Jacksonville's eight-yard line to get a first down. They're right now at the Jacksonville 29. So, the Indian defense could get a big stop here. As we said, this drive has gotten down into the red zone, but Jacksonville stiffening now. Is driver under a little bit of pressure. Right. And he throws incomplete. That will bring up the fourth down and long. So, Jacksonville holds. <laughs> well, it is clear. Who coach Faircloth of Sulphur Springs? Who wants, who wants to get the ball too? Yeah. It's Lewis. It's the Skyler Lewis show. Yeah, he's, yeah. Been, he's been targeted on that drive almost 90% of the time. And it's fourth down, and they're in four down territory. Michael Miles for Jacksonville was defending on that last play. So fourth and a while to go. Yeah, so they'll go for it. Don't let anybody get behind you here. 
Got a long way to get a first down. Get off the field defense. See if the Indian defense can come up big here on a fourth down. Driver going to heave this to the end zone. Two Indians back there. And it's incomplete, and Jacksonville takes over on downs. Boy, that, that could not have been a better ball thrown that time by the quarterback. He did not get any help from Skylar Lewis. Again, a, a targeted again. Okay, it's like who's going to get the ball? He dropped that ball in the corner of the end zone. And Lewis just misjudged it. It should have been a touchdown for Sulphur Springs. Jacksonville, not bad coverage. But the fighting Indians get the ball back, holding on fourth and long in the Jacksonville offense. The way that drive was going, you know, they got in the red zone. Now it's out to the Jacksonville 27 first down fighting Indians for their second offensive possession. So now the handoff again, straight ahead, head of steam for Boyd as he makes his way out over the 35 to about the 37, just running hard between the tackles. There was Boyd, Matt. Yeah, just great zone blocking by the Jacksonville offensive line right there. And again, <laughs> the experience of Jaden Boyd just finding that gap and getting in there, picks up eight. Walker, oh, get out of that. And he's tripped up before he could get ahead of steam there. That time is Walker. Boy, it looked like he was just going to slip out of that, and if he does, he's going to get at least another 10 yards, but he gets shoestring tackled there for basically no gain. So third and one, and I look for Boyd right here to try to pound it out for the first. There's the handoff straight ahead. He's got the yardage it looks like. He stood up. Let's see where they spot him, but I think yeah, he's got it. He's got it. So that's good for a Bill McCray Ford first down. Uh, if Jacksonville can continue to pound the ball like that, I mean, you haven't seen Reese Hicks on this only the second possession right here. It's been all Jaden Boyd, except for a couple of plays. He'll stay in there. Boyd le needing some air right now. He's kind of waving a little bit at the coach. Yeah, because he's been playing defense. Hicks is going to check in. Boyd needs to come out. You know, we got, what, five minutes to go here in this first quarter. Yeah, procedure <laughs> call against Jacksonville uh, there as well. Pace yourself. Got to get Boyd out of there and get him, get him some air after after a play like that. So procedure penalty makes it first down 15 now. Hicks checks in in the backfield for Jacksonville. Two Indian receivers on the left side, one on the right. McCown will look to the right side, got his man. And an acrobatic yeah, catch there. And he lost the ball to Jermaine Taylor after catching it. Oh, he did. Yep, yeah. had it, had got wrapped around the shoulders and that knocked the ball out of bounds. So that's one thing that Jermaine has got to work on is, is ball protection. He, he just, he refuses to go down. And when he does that, sometimes the ball gets knocked out. So picks up five, second down, we'll call it four, second and six for Jacksonville. Trips left, one right. Hicks still in the backfield with McCowan. McCowan takes the snap. Hands it off to Hicks straight ahead. Yeah. Battling his way wow. for another Bill McCray Ford first down. And Jacksonville just playing. Over midfield. Go ahead, Matt. Excuse me, Aaron. Up tempo right here. They got the first down. This is that up tempo. They're getting back to the line, run a play, keep Sulphur Springs off key. Yeah, this time McCown looks left, throws. Ah, a little bit low. Yep. Just kind of skip hopped it. To Trevor Arrington. I think, Arrington I think there, yeah. McCowan's telling him, I think he was a split out a little bit too wide was Arrington, the junior, seeing his first varsity action. He's supposed to come back to the ball, and <laughs> he didn't do it. Can't wait for it. Got to come back to it. So second and ten now. Ball sitting at the Sulphur Springs 49-yard line as McCowan going to take a step shot up in the pocket. Deep ball. Got oh, there's two a flag. Down there got to be a flag. Oh, no. No flags. Why? And, yeah, he's looking for Taylor down there, and he was bracketed by two Wildcats, and one of them just took him out. Well, I mean, I mean, the ball was going over Jermaine's head, but I thought as he adjusted to it, the, the second guy coming across just bumped the crud out of him. Okay, no call. So third down 10. Hicks stays in the backfield. Zeke Whitaker checks in for Jermaine after he had the long route. Third and 10. So this time McCowan looks to his left, throws complete. Arrington. But Arrington unable ah. to get going as he did have to come back that time and had Wildcats all over him. Well, that, that's the, that looks like that tunnel screen that, that Jacksonville has used for so many years and it's gonna bring up fourth down after the Indians 
Got that first down a moment ago by Hicks, unable to advance the ball. Now here's Nunez who had a nice punt earlier as the Wildcats now will get their second offensive possession. We got kind of a little defensive thing going on here, Aaron. Yeah, so we saw a great punt the first time as well from Nunez, so we'll, he'll try to pin them deep again. Will the Indians kick specialist Nunez and oh. roll out to his right under all kinds of pressure, gets the kick away, and Jacksonville all over it. fantastic coverage, nowhere to go. Is that Dorsey? <laughs> yes, it is. Jordan Dorsey, defensive end. You don't see a lot of number 75s going down the field like a gunner. <laughs> and that's what Jordan Dorsey did. The big rangy junior defensive end makes the tackle. I'll tell you, Nunez on that uh, soccer style right there, he's going to have to hustle that up just a tad. Oh, we got procedure on Jacksonville. And then the Sulphur is going to decline it, take it where it is. But I'm saying that. I mean that got that was very close to getting blocked. Yeah, they were they were right in his face. Yeah, it's not one two sure. and punt. It's like skip skip run a little bit two three yards and then punt. That gives them more time. Nice punt though. So here's so Sulphur's second possession. They go back to work at the Jacksonville 23 yard line. New driver and the Cats, they bring a man in motion from the right to the left, the handoff straight ahead and rolling. Yep, rolling right Number into the line. The Check that Luke. Yeah, it's, it's, well, they got some little guys back there, don't they? I mean, Luke is about 5'7". Yep. Looks like he's about a buck 50. D-Rose Luke. Yep, yep. And, their, and their leading rusher uh, is Malachi Rolla, number one, who started the game. He's 5'6", 140. They can both scoop, picks up four second six for Sulphur. So now Driver with two receivers on his right side, bad snap, he picks it back up, and here come the Indians, and nowhere to go for Driver as the fighting Indian defense. Now you wanna step away if you're in the well, You know, Driver dropped that, he was frustrated, so he said, you know what, I'm mad, I dropped the snap, I'm just gonna try to mow these guys over, and when he got out of bounds, kind of pushed himself up off the pile and kind of eyeballed some of the players for Jacksonville like, hey, yeah, you, so what? Loses two, loses four, I should say, yeah, third, third down and ten. Third and ten. So back to the 23, which was the original line of scrimmage on this drive. And Driver takes the snap, looks over oh, the middle. Michael! And almost oh. intercepted. Oh, that's a pick six, Michael. Oh, oh man. It was. Mike Miles. Yeah, our highlight player uh, almost made a highlight play. Great defensive positioning that time by Miles. Red Brady driver's eyes slid over into the passing lane, just unable to catch that bullet. And now Driver will stay in to punt the football for Wild for the Wildcats. Reese Hicks dropping back. So the Indians ought to get fairly good field position out of this one. See if Hicks is able to put on a good return. See if the Indians can maybe get a little pressure. On oh, this Driver. is returnable. Straight Let's go. Hicks. He slips a bit, but he's back up with it, and he is into Wildcat ah. territory. A flag comes in late. Yeah, let's see if they're going to call that on Sulphur Springs as Jacksonville's Dominique Bowens lost his helmet. Oh, look at this. We got a little push here. Come on, back up, back up. Hello. Don't do that. Come on now. Somebody just ripped the helmet off of Dominique Bowens and the referee threw a flag. Let's see if that goes against Sulphur because if it does, that's a 15-yarder and that would bring it well into Sulphur Springs territory for Jacksonville's Third offensive possession of this first quarter with 2:02 remaining. No score. As this thing has turned into a just a just a brawl. I mean, just I know it's hot. You kind of lose your temper a little bit, but yeah, uh, both weak. both teams acting rough here. Yeah, just week one. Everybody ready to go. Just want to want to hit somebody. Let's see the call here. The long discussion by the officials. Personal foul. Oh no, we're going to call against Jacksonville. Well, good grief. I totally blew that call. Well, I didn't see it, man. All I saw mean. was I saw Bowen's helmet off, and then Bowen's immediately turning around to the official and telling him that guy ripped my helmet off. And that's what I went with, and I was wrong. Very wrong. 
now Jacksonville is going to be penalized. That'll put it back to the Jacksonville 40-yard line. So, again, that may be one of those week one penalties. You just come in with a little bit too much, maybe a little bit too much adrenaline, and it's easy to do, Matt. You're in the historic tomato bowl. It's week one. Well, yeah, emotions are high. Yeah. It's your first game. A lot of the adrenaline that was there on the kickoff and the return and a couple of – that's that's gone. Now it's time to play some football. Lockdown. All the nerves should be gone by this time. So Boyd checks back in in the backfield with for Jacksonville at running back. Two receivers on the right side, one on the left, this time from McCown. McCown going to load up, throw across the middle. Got his man big. Bill McCray forward first down into Wildcat territory. Jermaine Taylor, Taylor yeah. just snatched it out of the air, and Brady sure McCown did. throws a dart. I mean, that was a frozen rope for the first down. Playing fast. Boyd. Now this time, Boyd gets the handoff, tries to cut to his right. Sulphur having none of it. Yeah, give Sulphur Springs credit. Jacksonville wanted to play fast right there, but they didn't play fast enough getting that playoff. Boy, what a great catch and throw. Oh, we're going to see that a lot in 2023 between Brady McCown and the senior future Division I player, Jermaine Taylor. So now two receivers on the right side, one on the left. Boyd still in the backfield. This time McCown goes left side. Got his Zeke. man Whitaker as he's spun down before he's really able to get going. I like the possession throw right there. Just You don't have to get a lot back. Just try to get four or five. Not a great spot for Zeke. I think they'll give him four third down, six to go. That'll take us under a minute here in a scoreless first quarter. Not what I was expecting, Aaron Swink, but I'll take it. So McCallan and the Indians looking to strike first. Keep this drive going here on the third down. McCallan this time looks right, throws Catch. right, and just ah. incomplete. Pass. As Powell, uh, excuse me, Arrington, first, able to come yeah. up with that one. I mean, just like I said earlier, I mean, you know, first varsity game jitters. I mean, that's exactly what I've seen Trevor Arrington make that catch on the junior varsity so many times last year with, with his eyes closed. And he drops that one. Got getting, just got to get the little nerves out right there. So fourth down, stops the clock at 39 seconds, yeah. fighting Indians in four down territory at the Wildcat 33, going for it. Yeah, so this time McCallan drops back, got a little bit of time, looks right, throws ah. out route incomplete. Ah. That was a great throw. It didn't look like it because it was, you know, went out of bounds, but Taylor got held up a little bit, got tangled up, I should say, not held. Or he makes that catch on the sidelines. He just kind of got yeah, tangled that, up. That ball was in a, in a spot, Matt, where only Taylor would have been exactly. able to get to it. Yeah, great observation, Aaron. That's exactly where Brady McCown threw that football, but got tangled up there, so the ball goes over and down. So both teams with, two, with, a, with a failed fourth down conversion, as we have 33 seconds to go in this scoreless first quarter. Man, this is just a slobber knocker so far, huh? Yeah, so back to work goes Brady Driver and the Wildcats. They've got two receivers on the left, one on the right. Looks right, throws off his hands and incomplete. Yeah, just too hot right there. I mean, if you're a receiver, Chris Adams, the junior receiver, I mean, you know, that, that's just the Roger Clemens fastball coming in there. Driver's a great thrower and great passer, but, you know, the ball's got to be catchable. And that ball just hit off the hands. But like I said, I mean, if he had a couple of catcher's mitts right there, that would have been a tough one to handle. Second and 10 now stops the clock with 29 seconds in the first. So we are scoreless. If you're just joining us on JISD Live, JISDlive.com. Glad you're with us. The Indians looking to make a stop here as driver shows a deep ball, but over everybody. Uh, Boy, he can air it out, can Brady Driver, Matt. Yep. Once again, a little bit of inexperience in that secondary as the fighting Indians were beat right there. Brendan Richards, the junior, just lost a step right there. And Skylar Lewis just turned the Jets on. And fortunately for the fighting Indians, Driver overthrews Lewis. Or that would have been a 69-yard touchdown pass because he was wide open. But as it is, third down and 10, ball sitting at the Sulphur Springs 31-yard line. They've got trips left. they got one receiver on the right. Driver going to load up again, throws right. Should have been intercepted. 
Incomplete. Fourth down, 10. Sulphur's going to punt again. We talked about it in pregame, Aaron. This Jacksonville defense under D.C. Bradley Gandy in his second year, they have really improved. I know you can tell. Yeah, they had some, some little blips last week in the Bullard scrimmage on pass coverage, and they've had a couple of those tonight too. But that will come. Yeah, but the, the aggressiveness of the front and the linebackers is impressive tonight. Yeah, so it looks far. like Jacksonville going to try to bring some pressure here on this punt from Driver. Let's see if they can get to him the way the Wildcats have been getting to Nunez, and the blocking is good. Yeah, they kicked it away from Trevor Arrington, yep. so ball goes out of bounds, and uh, Jacksonville gets another short field. Decent field position is with, with nine seconds remaining, a scoreless ball game here in the first quarter. It's kind of, kind of a, a, a different first quarter than some of the scores I saw on Thursday night football around the state of Texas, Aaron. Yeah, absolutely. I was like, where's the defense? Yeah, and even, with, even for Jacksonville, Matt, I'm struggling to think of the last – scoreless quarter of football, first uh, quarter of football yeah. that we've seen. It's been a while. But Brady McCown back to work. Ball sitting at the Jacksonville 48-49 yard line right at midfield. As McCown going to Step into the pocket, looks right, throws, got a man right at the sideline. Way to catch the football, Dre, Drew Dials. Yeah, Dials with his first catch. Now, you remember Dre Dials, his older brother, was a great offensive lineman for Jackson for the last couple of years. Drew is a wide receiver slash linebacker. Makes a nice catch. Picks up four. Oh, and go straight. Off straight ahead into Wildcat territory as the first quarter clock expires. So, after one, that's Jaden Boyd on the carry. No score between Jacksonville and Sulphur Springs. Penalty marker down, so we'll keep it here and get the get the call, Matt. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Aaron. I was going to say there's a penalty marker down, so we'll keep it here and we'll get the call before we switch ends here. The end of the first. Well, the officials have sent both teams off the field. This may be one of those times, Aaron. I, so you saw a flag. Yeah. Okay. Sure did. That's. Yeah, they're mar they're they're changing the side of the field. They're change switching ends right now. So let's see. No, they're going to go ahead and mark it off. So it's against Sulphur Springs. See the, it's just a five yarder. Unintentional face mask, maybe. Let's see. Or is that a ten yarder? No, all face mask penalties yeah, I was are fifteen. Say there is no. Yeah, there is. They're no all they're all fifteen. Unintentional. Yeah, anymore. yeah. Well, the official just. Waiting, taking his time. He's still not giving the signal with the side judge, excuse me, the head linesman over talking to Jason Holman, who's smiling about it. Yeah, the uh, head linesman just gestured towards what would be the Sulphur Springs. Oh, it's offside. Side. The offside, offside is the call. So that's going to make it second and two, Aaron, when we come back for the second quarter. So after one, no score. We'll take a short break and come back. This is Fighting Indian Football here on JISD Live. Dr. Folden, Dr. Westbrook, Dr. Stocks, and their dental team at All Smiles provide a wide range of dental services. This includes cleanings, fillings, crowns, bridges, implants, and cosmetic dental care. Call and schedule your appointment at 903-586-0741. Bill McRae Ford has been serving East Texans since 1976. They can help you find the best deal on a used car or if you're ready to purchase something new. Open Monday through Saturday, Bill McRae Ford. Come see us. Congratulations is Jacksonville's source for a full line of awards. And the chains aren't right. But we don't stop there. <laughs> and we are back for the beginning of the second quarter as they have to get the chains set. It's the first week for everybody, Matt. I am so confused. What is going on? Should be about second and two. That's right. Maybe Is it a first? What is this? So now the handoff is to Reese Hicks. It was second and about a half yard, and it looks like he got the first down, did Hicks. But by the time they got the chain set, barely, the ball was snapped. So now it should be first down. I don't know. Let me see. What are they doing here? <laughs> Not exactly sure because it looked like, look, it's, look it's, at the chains on that far side. It looks like. It's still second down. 
<laughs> what? No, the Why team. is it still sucking down? It was first down. They had a roll. Oh, gotcha. So it was first down on the penalty, and they didn't put they didn't do the uh, the down marker to first down. Ah, uh, there we go. Yeah. There we go. Well, Coach I just, Holman just I was going to say you got that from the top. Yeah, I heard me explain Coach it. Holman down there. Yeah, let him work, man. Yeah, let him work. Hey, get out of his way. <laughs> you saw you saw the the promo. Leave him alone. Yeah, that's right. Can't get away from that's me. That's right. Not even at Waterburger. No. <laughs> so second down. And just about 10 to go after Resix gets stopped. As another stoppage in play here is Coach Faircloth having something explained to him, the head coach for Sulphur Springs. He's probably just as confused as I was about the down right there. And by the way, we have a great chain crew here at Tomato Ball. I mean, if it's the same ones that have been doing it for years, Blake Stevens, Kenny Hart, who am I missing? That that wasn't right though, Matt. What? It was offsides, five yard penalty. I thought it was second and two it was coming second back. Second and two, and, and they just were late setting the chains. It wasn't first and ten. Yeah. They didn't get a first down. I, I didn't rush. think it would have been an eight yard penalty for offsides, yeah, yeah, and that yeah. wasn't right. Nope. That's why I had second and two. So yes, you're right. <laughs> All right, still so second. I, I can't believe they snapped the ball without the chains being set. I know. And that's the – That's the, you know, yeah, the first game for everybody. That's right. And that's the first time to hear from Todd Travis this year, and he's – He's on all, it. He's already solving problems. He is on top of it. While we take this break, we'd like to say thank you again to our t tonight's hospitality sponsor, State Farm Agent Jay Jackson, and to tonight's team meal sponsor, Matt Montgomery Financial. Thank you both. So they're just now so, getting this straightened out. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Now Jason Holm is this, getting an explanation. Yeah, th th this is one of those times that you'd like to have an official mic yeah. up and maybe get a little explanation. Are they writing a research paper? Cite your sources now. Okay, now. <laughs> first down. Now, that's it. Jason Holman just said first down. That's All what right, we had, so, Todd. Yep. That's what we had. Todd was right. It wasn't a first down. Now it is. So there's another Bill McCray Ford first down as Jacksonville with Brady McCallan. Oh, yeah. Over the middle. Big gainer. How about another Bill McCray oh, no, Ford no, first no, down? No, no. Oh, man. Get up, Brendan. And God dog it. Yeah, Richards. He is a player. Caught a touchdown pass against Bullard last week on a strike from Brady McCown and caught that slant and just went down awkwardly. And yeah, he had that, a, yeah. He had a player kind of up up around his maybe his neck or his shoulder or his shoulders for sure. Yeah, he tried to get up just then and did a push up, but now they're looking at that right leg. So don't want to see that. Let's get a couple of spots in while they're tending to Brendan Richards of Jacksonville. Yeah, we'll step away. This is Fighting Indian Football on JSD Live. Since 1953, Hubert Glass Oil has been serving East Texans the finest automotive fuels and lubricants. Huber Glass Oil Company, the clear solution for your business. The honey barbecue chicken strip sandwich is delicious. It's got that barbecue flavor, the cheese melts on top with that Texas toast. You look at it, your mouth starts watering. It's my go-to sandwich. The honey barbecue chicken strip sandwich, that's my all-time favorite. I'm Matt Montgomery. For over 40 years, my business has helped people manage their money and organize their financial life. I'm a registered investment advisor with the state of Texas and chartered financial consultant. Whether you need portfolio management or comprehensive financial planning, I can help you. Call me for a free consultation. That's not walking bad. And we're back live at the Historic Tomato Bowl as Jacksonville's Brendan Richards being helped off the field. Looks like he's moving all right, Matt. That's a good sign. That is a good sign. Walking a little gingerly, but, you know, a lot of times when it's an ACL or something like that, they don't really let him walk off like that. So, he might have just got popped in the knee, a little bone bruise. But, nevertheless, Brendan Richards with his first varsity catch gets Jacksonville a first down, their deepest penetration of the ball game so far at the Sulphur Springs 27-yard line scoreless here at Tomato Bowl with the Fighting Indians. With their fourth offensive possession of this first half, they are on the move here. So McCown and Boyd back to work in the backfield. The handoff is to Boyd, and he tries to go straight ahead, and he is pushed back. Well, when you get tackled by a Hall of Famer named Zach Thomas. Yeah. Number 10, Jaden Boyd, the ball carrier, tackle bait. 
That's his name, Zach Thomas. Yeah, I'm surprised he had any eligibility left. Yeah, we just saw him yeah. enshrined. Yeah. So no gain on the play. They'll give Jaden the forward progress, second and 10, still for Jacksonville. 1040 and counting here, second quarter. McCown going to load up, go deep. Yeah. Got a man. Touchdown. Touchdown. Jermaine Taylor from 27 in the corner of the end zone. So the what a catch. Score of the year wow. is a strike. Wow. Brady McCown dropped an absolute dime right past the first pylon, and Jermaine high pointed it over two defenders for Sulphur Springs. For the score, 6 nothing Jacksonville. And here's the senior, Jesus Nunez, out of the hold of Trevor Arrington, as Ryan Walker will be the deep snapper. And the Fighting Indians strike first with 10.34 remaining here in this first quarter, or second quarter, excuse me. So the extra point attempt brought to you by our friends at Neighbors Coffee. There's the snap, the hold is down, the kick is blocked. Uh, Trevor dropped it. There we go, it's still alive. Ball still alive, let's see who comes up with it. Uh, it wasn't a bad snap, it just, um, he just, uh, just didn't get it down on the tee and it slipped through his hands. And again, it's a very muggy, humid night. So you have to expect some wet hands trying to handle the football with all the sweat. But the Indians up six, nothing. And so, Jacksonville strikes first. We'll take a short break and come back. This is Fighting Indian Football on JISD Live. Gene Bromelow, class of 66, and his daughter Ann Farmer proudly support Jacksonville Athletics. Come on over to the South Jackson Dairy Queen and get one of their world-famous blizzards. Dairy Queen, where happy tastes good. Tonight's game statistics are sponsored by Randy Gorham, CPA. Randy Gorham, CPA, the source for your accounting and income tax needs since 1984. Since 2004, Legends Old Time Burger Cafe has been the home of Jacksonville's best old-fashioned hamburgers. Hand-battered chicken strips, chicken fried steak, fries, and onion rings are the best around. Legends, home of Jacksonville's best old-fashioned hamburger. And we are back live at the Historic Tomato Bowl, downtown Jacksonville, where the Fighting Indians have taken the first lead of the night, 6 nothing, with our first Fighting Indian scoring drive summary of 2023. We'll welcome in Todd Travis. Todd? It was a six-play drive, covered 52 yards, ending with a touchdown, putting the Indians up 6-0. to zero. Well, Indians just really doing a nice job catching the football. I was worried coming into this ballgame, guys. The last two weeks of the two scrimmages, there was a lot of drops. I mean, Brady, Brady McCown was delivering some dimes just like he is tonight, but that was they didn't catch him tonight. Pretty good, not bad. So Jesus Nunez has the ball teed up, dropping back for Sulphur Jackson Hare, one of the wideouts. Haven't heard much from him tonight. He was their leading receiver last year, but they've been going with Skyler Lewis mainly. Here's the kickoff. It's a high kick to the near side. The up man makes the fair catch at about the 28. That's where the Wildcats will take over. Skyler Lewis, right on cue, touches the ball again. Yeah, Jesus Nunez was another fighting Indian who put a lot of work in spring, summer, kicking. Just, I mean, just. There's no substitute, and of course, I'm talking to a couple of kickers up there in the press box and the Travises, but <laughs> he can really, he's really done a nice job from where he started a couple of years ago, dropping that ball in between the 25 and the 30 where you wanted on those kickoffs to make them fair catch it. Big fella. So this time the handoff straight ahead out over the 30. Cameron Jefferson with his first carry. He'll pick up four, we'll call it five, second and five. Obviously the largest running back of the three running backs that we've seen so far for Sulphur Springs. So he's a senior. Maybe they're just kind of doing what a lot of teams do in these non-district games. Let's rotate them and see what we have. It's his turn, he picks up five for Sulphur. Two receivers on the left side, one on the right this time for Driver. He fakes a the handoff, then fires left. He's got his man. 
and see how Jacksonville can pursue. Uh, tackle. Blown tackle. And now they're going to have to catch him, and they won't be able to do it. Good grief He's just moment. out, yeah, stepped out just short. Well, I was about to say 66-yard touchdown. Is that what that is? Did he score? I'm so far down from I can't see. Yeah, out back at the 17, Matt. Oh, but okay. All right. Just on the line, I think. He looked like he was gone. That's just poor tackling by Jacksonville. They had him wrapped up. They just didn't pull him down. And, and as I said in the pregame, much improved defensively for Jacksonville as far as tackling in the two scrimmages. Really learn how to use their hands and, and pull down and, and get them down. Don't just bump them. you got to pull down. Not that time. So for now, in the red zone, 17. So Jacksonville, the second deepest penetration against them so far. This one into the end zone and caught for the Wildcat touchdown. Let's just spot who that is. I believe it's Skylar Lewis, the go-to receiver for the Sulphur Springs Wildcats. Yeah, that's it Lewis again. 17-yard slant route. Not bad coverage in the secondary by Kincaid for Jacksonville. I mean, he was right there. Yeah, Lewis just. He just went up and got went it. Went up and got it. That's yep. exactly what I was about to say. So now. Man, just like that, guys. What, four plays? Yeah. Yeah. Sulphur Springs with a chance to take the lead. The extra point brought to you by Neighbors Coffee is up and good. So with 9.36 to go here oh, in the first on. half, score now, Sulphur Springs 7, Jacksonville 6. We'll take a short break and come back. This is Jacksonville fighting Indian football on JISD Live. For the first day of school, for the last day of work, for the satisfaction of a job well done, for the ideas that change the world, for good times, for not so good times. For her future and hers and his. For serving our customers and connecting communities. We're here with you for good. Austin Bank, with you for good. And we are back live here at the Tomato Bowl where Sulphur Springs has just taken the 7-6 lead with a quick strike scoring drive. And to summarize the drive, we'll bring in Todd Travis once again. Todd? Those three plays, 73 yards for the touchdown for Sulphur Springs, bringing the score Sulphur Springs 7, Jacksonville 6. Yeah, so, three plays, yeah, not three four. Three plays. Aaron. Yeah. Even worse. It's how quick they can score. So now we got a penalty on Jacksonville on the extra point. One of those um, low mentality moments, if you will, where you just do something really not very smart. Officials right there, and you're going to take a poke at a guy because he said he didn't like your socks or whatever it was. Come on. Frustrating, man. So now Sulphur's going to kick off from midfield. I mean, why wouldn't you onside this right here or a, little, or a little pooch? Yeah, we'll see what the Wildcats come up with. But Jacksonville with their backs against the wall here. Oh, they'll just oh, put, kick yeah. this through the end zone, though. So 9.36 to go here first half. Jacksonville now down a point. Yeah, it's just about after, composure, and it, you know, after yeah. the, after the Bullard scrimmage, it was a little frustrating. You know, like Jacksonville lost the live part, twenty-one-seven, and you know, Jason Holman had a heart-to-heart -heart with him Touch after the ball the game. game. He said, "Guys, I don't care about the uh, game. I want to talk about first and ten your character and the way you handle yourself." And that's what he talked about for like fifteen minutes, and and that's just one of those things. Those that loses ball games for you when you act, you don't act right. So you, you know, if you want to, if you want to be a champion, you gotta you gotta act like a champion. So I'm through lecturing. There's Jacksonville now with a 
first down on their own 25 to start this drive. Reese Hicks back in the ball game in the backfield. He gets a little pitch from McCown, and he's going to try to make his way around the right end, and he gets into the second level out over the 30. Made a little something out of nothing. Did Hicks. You know, in the by district game last year for Frankston at quarterback, Reese Hicks was a sophomore. He had 341 total yards in that game in by district for Frankston. Uh-oh, well, busted oh, play. Yeah, this is, they got crossed up, did McCown and Hicks, and McCown is slung down. As McCown just wasn't quite sure what side yeah. Hicks was going to be on when he looked to make the handoff. And, you know, Brady's a great quarterback, but he's not going to make you forget Cam High. You know, I mean, he's <laughs> he's not the uh, he's not the speed burner. But he is a solid high school quarterback. I can tell you he's only going to get better. So, loss of about two on the play, maybe three. So, third down, makeable five right here. Boy, you sure don't want to yeah. give the ball right back and go three and out. Well, that was just one of those – kind of early season communication yep. issues on that play as well. And truth be told, we really haven't seen that many of those kinds of things tonight. Yeah, Jackson, we're going to have to burn a timeout here. First one, yep. So we'll take the short timeout with them and come back. This is Fighting Indian Football on JISDlive.com. Special thanks to the Jacksonville Education Foundation for everything that they do for Jacksonville teachers and students. For more information, please visit JISDfoundation.org. Dr. Darwin Dar and his staff at Dar Chiropractic specialize in family chiropractic care, exercise rehab, digital x-rays, nutrition and weight loss programs, decompression, and chiropractic wellness care. Located down the street from the tomato bowl, Dar Chiropractic. They can help you feel better. A one of a kind mushroom Swiss burger is back. And now it's an all time favorite. You're gonna love this burger. That au jus sauce on top. The creamy au jus sauce. Every bite's perfect. It's not just a mushroom Swiss burger, it's a water burger mushroom Swiss burger. And we're back. 8.37 to go here in the first half. Jacksonville trailing Sulphur Springs by a score of 7 to 6. Third down and 5 coming up here for the Indians as they look to. Keep this drive going. So Hicks stays in at running back for Jacksonville. Indians got doubles on either side. So we'll see what McCallan chooses to do. He looks right, throws, got a there it is. man, got the Bill McCray Ford first down and more. Yes, a little tunnel screen to Jermaine. Yes, Taylor pass is comes up Jermaine with it and Taylor. turns on the Jets. Well, what a nice job by Brady McCown letting the defense come and then leading his receiver Taylor to make sure he got it right in that pocket for the first. So now it's Hicks and Hicks with a head of steam and fighting out to about the 47. And I, you, 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 you get glimpses with Hicks that if he can get going, he's going to be a lot of fun to watch. Hot up tempo here. Two each way this time. It ticks again, and he yes. does get going. First down. And he picks up. Bill McCray Ford first down, as you said, Matt. Uh, Hicks took a real shot in the back. He'll check. He's okay. Checked out. Checking out of the game. Yeah, just Boyd. Jaden Boyd tried to check in for him a minute well, ago, Aaron, but they were going up tempo. I'll tell you what. The training staff has gone right over to Hicks on the bench. Uh, he just kind of took a shot in the back of the head. They'll check that out. So first down, Jacksonville. A little bit of a low snap, but McCowan able to Big boy. gather it, and he finds Boyd. And now, oh, he spins off one man. And Is that a flag? Pass is to Boyd. Uh, good check down by Brady McCowan finding Boyd out of the backfield. Didn't have anything downfield. Yeah, good job by Just, Boyd being ready for yep, that. And flip it out there to him. But I mean, I'm see something, I see something. Yeah, it's a marker. Yeah, there's a penalty marker down. Let's see if we got – we may have a, a lineman downfield. I hope not. I mean, you see that a lot when there's a little hesitation when the quarterback doesn't get one. Let's see the call here. Am I 0 for 2? Yeah, I think that's right, man. Yes, I'm 0 for They're 2. Waving it off, it looks like, yes, though. So. I'm 0 for 2 on calls. There you and go. I'll, I'll take You'll that You'll take that two. one. Yeah, absolutely. So Jacksonville picks up a nice – well, now they haven't moved it. Here we go. There's the move out there. Five yards, second and five on the catch. As – Checking in for Jacksonville. Didi Maris with his first check into the ball game at running back for Jacksonville, wearing a familiar number 14. So 
Look at this run. Look at a handoff. Oh. Will Maris and he's a bull. He he just refused to go down. He's tough. I'm, he's one of those running Number backs 13, that Deacon is going to slip Harris. in the game Ball every now and then for Jacksonville, and he's going to get you some hard yards. Short game brings up second down and about. Picked up two. a hard three, third and two now. He'll stay in the ball game with Brady in the backfield. Two receivers right, one left. Where's now behind McCown and it. Tried to hard count him there, didn't work. A pistol look here. So 650 and counting. McCowan looks left, throws. Oh, come on, Trevor. As Arrington with a second it. drop of the ball game. Yeah, goodness. Took a shot too, did Trevor. Trevor, that's a, oh, that's a first down. Ah. Well, they're in four down territory. Here comes Boyd. Mares will check out. And you got to believe on fourth down and about uh, a couple of yards yeah, fourth right and there. a couple. Yep. You, you, you just try to get behind your zone blocking and, and find a little crease for Jaden Boyd to get through for the first. Three yards in a cloud of crushed rubber. Look how tight this is. This is a – oh, this is Wildcat. Yep. Jaden. Goes to Boyd and he he's got, it. got the Bill McCray Ford first down. I love it. He's still not down. Finally. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Play's Brady, blown dead, but boy. Brady was split out at, at wide receiver out here. Didn't notice that until just when the ball was snapped, and that Wildcat worked well. Mares will check in. Didi Mares will check in for Boyd, who gets the first down on the Wildcat. Boyd has yet to check out. Now they're telling him well, they got, they're keeping them both in there. Okay, no, here we go. Here comes Jaden. Nice job for the senior Boyd. Got to play three and a half games last year. Got hurt over at Pine Tree. And boy, that changed a lot of things for Jacksonville in the 2022 season, losing him. First and 10 for Jacksonville. Two receivers each way, one back. Maris! And Maris! Look at him! Running hard like you said he would, Matt. I've seen him do it. Big Bill McCray Ford first down deep into the red zone. He is good. He is a sleeper. He's one of those guys you just don't expect. And they go quick, do the Indians. McCowan throws just incomplete. Man, that looked busted to me. Boy. That looked like Maris missed the handoff, and yeah. Brady just looked up and tried to throw it away, and Zeke Whitaker tried to catch it. Yeah. <laughs> Don't do that. Just let it go. Yeah, it was that same miscommunication on the handoff where Brady kind of turns the, the wrong way or, or Didi wasn't in the right spot, one of the two. So second down at the 11. Jacksonville can get a first down at the one of Sulphur. See if Brady puts one up here or if he pulls it down. He looks right, throws incomplete. Ah. Give the ball to Bears. <laughs> Let him go with it. So incomplete, third down. Definitely in Jesus Nunez's field goal range right here, but you know they had problems with the extra point. Yeah, you've got a new... New yeah. battery, so to speak, with the, the new holder. Yep. Same deep snapper and same kicker, but that holder is critical. Trips left for Jacksonville, third and 10 at the 11. So this time, oh McCallan, Lord. not a lot of time, and he takes a shot. Yeah, we talked about, Matt, if given time, Brady McCowan can throw lasers all over the yard. He can. But boy, and, he just didn't get it there. And I got to say, ever since that uh, that first quarter, the offensive line's done a nice job protecting they Brady. Have. They've done pretty good. That was just that was one where they did not. So that doesn't knock them totally out of field goal position because this is going to be about a 35-yarder right in the middle of the field, or exactly on the right hash, I should say. But the critical thing is Trevor's got to get the snap. He's got to get the hole. I mean, snap. He's got to get it down. So this will be a 35-yarder for Jesus Nunez, definitely in his range. Yeah, this field goal attempt, like all of the attempts this year, brought to you by our friends at Neighbors Coffee. This time the kick is away. It looks pretty good. Ooh. It is good. How about it? And so Jacksonville retakes the lead at 9-7 to seven with Hello. a big boot from Jesus Nunez. And if you need a kick, you'll see our friends at Neighbors Coffee. Boy, it looked like he had a little extra shot there to Nunez. Man, great and snap and a great hold. Jacksonville 
back in front. We'll take a short break and come back. This is Fighting Indian Football on JISD Live. As ETMC joins the UT Health family, we're bringing a new vision of health care to East Texas. Where the brightest minds in academics and medicine work together to treat the most complex health challenges and improve lives. Where access to world-class medicine and cutting-edge technology will bring health, hope, and a brighter tomorrow. We are UT Health East Texas, advancing healthcare together. When life throws you a curveball, give it to the guy who can knock it out of the park. And a high drive to right, sending Ludwig back. It's gone! Micah Hoff Power. Call Micah Hoff Power at Texas Farm Bureau for all of your life, auto, and home insurance needs. And we're back at the historic Tomato Bowl downtown Jacksonville. The Fighting Indians have retaken the lead now 9-7 to seven as they cap off that drive with Jesus Nunez's his first field goal of the year to break it down again. Here's Todd Travis. Todd? It was a 14-play drive, covered 58 yards, ending with a field goal, putting the Indians up 9-7. to seven. Yeah, key thing is you get points out of that, stalling at the 11. Getting the big loss on the sack. Here's the fair catch by Sulphur again at the 27. Nice job by Nunez. You know, you, you have a nice drive going down there and you give up a, a sack to where, you know, it's not a makeable play then. So here comes Nunez, just ice water in his veins and just drilled it. And when I say yeah. drilled it, there was not a lot of height on he that sure field goal. He did as a line drive. Yeah. Yeah. So the Indians with a 9-7 lead in Sulphur Springs after scoring on three plays a few minutes ago. They'll have the football at their own 26 to start this drive. So a pretty tight look this time for the Wildcats. The handoff is to the left side. Nice job by the we'll end around. Jacksonville doing a nice job staying with it, as you said, Matt. Yeah, Miles sliding down the line of scrimmage, helping on the tackle, but it was actually Drew Dials from his linebacker position making the tackle with some help from Miles. But not before five yards were picked up by Cameron Jefferson, the senior running back for Sulphur Springs. Folks, stay with us. We'll have our Waterburger halftime report. Waterburger, you make the order. Waterburger makes it fresh. I had to read that. I couldn't remember. Had to refresh your memory. That's yes. all right. Uh oh, look out, look out, Deep look out. ball this time Pick from oh my. Driver and almost intercepted. Uh, it's hard to catch a ball As, with your face mask. Yeah, the Travius Kincaid <laughs> with a shot at it. I'm not sure if the ball got tipped or not, but that ball came down and almost wedged itself between the top of his face mask and the crossbar. Yeah. Incomplete third down. And, guys, if, if you could get a stop right here, if you're Jacksonville, you got two timeouts remaining with 422 and get the ball back. You got some time to do something right here, but you got to get a stop right here. Watch Lewis, the leading receiver for Sulphur, split left. He's the one guy over there on that left side. Oh, here football! comes Indian pressure. Ball is out. Oh, good job, baby. And Jacksonville. That was Trent Powell causing that fumble coming from the back side. And Brady Driver, the quarterback for Sulphur Springs, never saw Trent Powell. And he came out and he chopped his arm and he lost the ball. It was a fumble, but Driver was able to fall on it for the big loss of 10. And Driver will be standing at his own 13-yard line. And Jacksonville will get the ball back here with 348 remaining and two timeouts in their hip pocket. Yeah, a chance to go up a couple of scores here before the half. And again, they should get pretty good field position. What a punt. Although this is a great punt. And it's going to hit and stay inbounds and get even. Well, maybe maybe they got lucky. That is an amazing punt. Well, no. <laughs> I was going to say maybe they got lucky and it went out a little further back up the field. But unfortunately, no. No, no, no. I'm looking at I was looking. The ball landed like two yards inside the white. Yeah. And then it took a then it went straight toward the middle of the field. Yeah, it just kind of took a Okay, he was standing he was standing on well that's from where the ball was. I mean he was standing on his 13. So the ball was on the what 23 what 23 or so. And now the ball's on the Jacksonville 25. That's what you call flipping the field. 
from the 23 on your own the end. Jacksonville the 10. Jacksonville yeah. 10. Yeah, that rolled all the way back to the Jacksonville 10. Oh, I'd say I'm looking at 25, and they don't have it marked yet, so it's on the 10. Yeah. Yep. First and 10 on the 10, not 25 like the scoreboard says. Yeah, and that's where I was saying, Matt, hopefully hoping it got lucky and might have hit the white, but it did not. So all the way back. There goes Maris. The 10, but look at Dee Dee Maris again bursting up the middle. <laughs> Would you call him a sleeper? He's a sleeper like that has it. suddenly woken up like the it. sulfur defense. Yeah. So that's good for the Bill McCray forward first down. There's another five, six, seven. <laughs> refuses to go down. Again, number 14, D.D. Yeah, Maris, and that'll take carrier. take us down under three minutes here. We'll see if Sulphur Springs injury right here. So Jacksonville's Second offense will have a chance three. to kind of pull together here and regroup as they attend to the Sulphur Springs injury on the field. He got D.D. Maresd. Yeah, D.D. is – we talk about him just running hard, and he will. He'll run right over you if he well, has to. He is the definition of somebody who runs downhill. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And he's five foot seven, maybe, maybe five six, and he, he weighs every bit of about maybe 145, 150. I, don't, I may get a call from his mom saying, don't say my son's that small. I mean, but he, he may be 160. I don't know, but he's, he can run the football. So that's very nice to know when you got you got obviously Jaden Boyd, you got Reese Hicks, and now you got a guy like Didi Mares. And you know, pretty much last year, guys, the, the, the running game was dominated by one guy, Joellen Kennedy. He was out, outstanding all year long, but he, he was the only really real threat for Jacksonville in the backfield running the football. So it's nice to see kind of a three-headed monster Jacksonville has right now back there. So pick up a Seven yards for Didi right there, second and three for Jacksonville. That pushes the ball out to the fighting Indian 26. I'll check that 27. Two receivers left, one right, this time for McCown. Pitches to the left side. Boyd. And Boyd is going to pick up a Bill McCray Ford first down. He's got to get, they want to go up tempo right here and not use one of those timeouts. They'll stop the clock to get the chain set. The clock is still stopped at 2.46. They haven't turned it back on just yet. Yeah, I believe, Matt, that I heard that rule is changing in the college game, but I guess that it will still be in place this year in high school, which yeah, is they stopped it. good. This is straight ahead. Boom. For right Boyd, boy, another Bill McCray Ford first down to midfield. And, and this looks just like the Kaufman scrimmage two weeks ago when Jacksonville was up tempo and the Kaufman coach came over to Coach Holman and said, man, we cannot run with y'all on this up-tempo stuff. Y'all are gashing us. That's what Jacksonville's doing to Sulphur Springs right now. So this time, McCowan going to have some time. Looks to be knocked down. Uh, McCowan got his arm hit, and the ball could have yeah, been picked off right there, but it was incomplete. Taylor, incomplete. Yeah, Sulphur Springs came up pointing. I thought they had it, but. Stops the clock with 225. Second and 10, ball right at midfield, just inside there at the 48 of Jacksonville. They were, they were going downtown to Jermaine right there, just didn't get the pass off. So now right back to work goes Mares. He has slung down as he makes his way just over midfield. Uh, they kept the clock running. I thought he got out of bounds, sir. Oh, that's right, if you get tackled like that. Yeah, yeah if you're tackled out. Yeah. So third down, now Jacksonville. No, Sulphur Springs is going to burn a timeout here. Wow. wonder if they just didn't have the personnel in that they felt like they needed. I don't know yeah. why else you burn one there. Stay with us at the half. We'll have the Whataburger Halftime Report, Halftime Stats with Todd Travis. All game stats are sponsored by Randy Gorham, CPA, also the Jacksonville mayor. He's your source for accounting and income need, tax needs since 1984, and as I like to say, the guy that keeps me out of jail. <laughs> That's right. Also, Matt, a new uh, feature of our halftime will be the Ask the Indians oh, that's segment, oh. and it's a lot of fun. People are going to love that. It's a lot yeah, of fun. Yeah, y'all stay tuned for at the half for that. That's going to be great. Also want to shout out to uh, three of our uh, late game sponsors, we'll call them. We're still, we still have Dark Chiropractic sponsoring the Bone Crusher hit of the game. Congratulations is still sponsoring the play of the game. 
And Austin Bank, the your community bank locally owned and operated since 1900, will also sponsor the Jacksonville offensive and defensive players of the game. Don't forget our halftime talk with head coach Jason Holman, sponsored by All Smiles Dentistry, and of course post game as well. I think I have run the gamut on this little break here of all of our sponsors. We do appreciate them, though, Matt. Glad, yes. glad we're able to shout them out and that they're able to help us get on the air. No doubt. If we didn't have them, we wouldn't get to do this. So back to work for Brady McCown and the Tribe here. As McCown looks, sets, got time. Oh, it's a hole right and there on you three. There's a flag. Yes. It comes in. Yes. And Matt, you're right on top of that one. I mean, it was a hold because it was a beautiful outside shoulder look back. Jermaine goes down about eight yard stops. Brady pumps. He turns around and then he immediately looks to his outside shoulder and, and Brady put the ball right there. But number three, it's three on three right there. Number three, Austin Cheney on covering number three, Jermaine. Cheney just reached over and grabbed Jermaine as he was about to make that catch. And the official now talking to Cheney, and Cheney's lobbying for, you know, so if I grab his jersey and I let go, is that okay? <laughs> so, wait a minute, what are we doing here? What's going on? Oh, they're, they're marking it off. Oh, Jason was. <laughs> <laughs> he had the same reaction you did. Yeah. Jay, Jason's, Jason's smiling now. I don't know what that was happening. They were going back to the original line of scrimmage and marking it off from there. High school football is different than college in the NFL on the rules on that. So automatic first down for Jacksonville with 2.02 remaining. Indians still have two timeouts. Reese Hicks back in. He gets the handoff. And he is stood up at about the 30, pushed back. Boy, yeah. he refused to go down those welted hicks. We've Man. seen some hard running yep. from these fighting Indian backs here in the first half. I've seen some scrums like that on ESPN 8, the Ocho, with all in Australia, man. Did you see that scrum right yeah. there? Yeah. Just blowing through there. Picks up three hard yards, does Reese Hicks, the junior for Jacksonville. What a welcome addition he has been for the fighting Indians, not just on that offensive side of the ball, but he's also the starting free safety. So clock continues to run as the Indians taking their time getting this play in. Come on. Well, we know Sulphur can score fast, and so maybe that's a little bit of the calculus here. Oh. Deep ball for McCowan. Ah, and Zeke. And just out of the reach. Zeke Whitaker, they're in a Whitaker receiver. over there. So Whitaker was, did a nice job adjusting to the ball. Kind of slowed up a little bit, and that allowed Clayton the Sulphur Springs cornerback covering him to kind of recover. Yeah, Matt, I don't know if you're able to listen into our pregame interview with uh, JHS principal, Dr. Ben Peacock, but Zeke's uh, got a, quite a legacy to live up to with that 88 jersey. That was Dr. Peacock's back in the uh, day. Wait a minute, we got a penalty here. Jacksonville was moving all over oh, the place. Oh my goodness, yeah, unable to get set. Ah, so, uh, but yeah, man, I, I hate to tell Dr. Peacock this, but I was doing the games back when he was playing, and I was trying to remember what number he was. Well, he was 88. Well, the, yeah, the question, the, the, the opening question from, from Mr. Trailer was, who is the best third string tight end in Jacksonville history? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, number 88. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, unfortunately for Dr. Peacock, he was he was at the age where he was on some pretty good football teams <laughs> he sure for was. Jacksonville. He sure was. I mean, those were some cat dogs back in that, that back when he was playing. So with the penalty now, makes it third down and twelve for Jacksonville. They'll go trips right with the Indians, trying to get a chunk back here. Look at this, McCallan, little trickery. Yeah, baby. And there's the Hell yardage no. back. And the big Bill McCray Ford first down. Little, oh, baby. Oh, man. Shades of Wayne Coleman there, Jason Holman. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, we've seen that a time or two. We have seen that work before. Wow. Nice little catch by Jermaine. Calmly just flips it out to the big fella, 240-pound senior, Jaden Boyd, who tiptoes down the sideline. He almost went out of bounds. He planted that foot. Came up the field and gets well, a first down at the 12. Wait. Now what? procedure call against Jacksonville. Wait a minute. Wow. you got to be kidding. Where? That had to be the latest flag. I mean, 
Was it on the other side of the field where we can't see it? I, I'm going to be honest. I don't know where it was. <laughs> Ryan Travis never saw a flag. Todd, did you see a flag? Man. Todd says no. Was that an invisible flag? <laughs> we could never see it. Five in the backfield. Okay. Five in the backfield. Oh, gosh. Somebody was twitching back there. At five, that's Tyron Glenn. No, 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 no. Five yards. Five yards. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah. McCown deep, deep. under pressure. Oh, quacker. Rolls left, throws deep. Oh. Dang, he almost Just caught had it. to go back and come back and play some defense. Oh. That ball came off kind of funny on Brady's hand again. Your yeah. hand's sweaty. It's a muggy knot. Yeah. That was a, <laughs> Jermaine had to come back and play a little DB there. That was a uh, Kurt Gowdy American sportsman duck coming oh, down wow. there, if you remember that show. No, y'all don't remember that show. It was way before. You're reaching way back The American sportsman? One. Yeah. Okay. Whack, whack. Yep. I mean, that was, yeah. That Phil, was, Phil Robertson duck, maybe. That's, that, that, that was. Get that us was, a little closer to. A little closer to Jacksonville. That was my best pass. <laughs> the quacking duck. Yeah. Of course, we Jacksonville does have a connection to the Robertson yep. duck hunting dynasty, the yep. duck dynasty, Old if Tommy. you will. Tommy Robertson. My baseball coach, position coach in football, passed away a couple of years ago. So there you go. I think there's your duck reference. That Yeah. Might keep a little bit more of our audience with you, Matt. Although, as I said earlier, sometimes you make references for yourself. Yes. Sometimes I make references that nobody gets but me. Reed and, Kerr and that's would why be proud. I hear, that's why I hear crickets from the press box that's sometimes. Right. That's right. Okay, so now it's a little sloppy here. Jacksonville with another penalty. I mean, you're, you're moving the ball. You're looking good. And now, I mean, you're, you're down, what, to the 23-yard line? Now you're back at midfield. Almost at the 46. Ugly. Ugly way to finish this here. Still so leading 9-7. Yeah, they'll line up and do this again with a Nunez punt. This one's end over end. will hit and take a little Jacksonville bounce. And good coverage from the Indians will knock down the return man at the 20. Boy, that's pretty gutsy play by Wyatt Watson he right sure there. sure was. Kind of took it off the uh, turf at his shoestrings and – then took a shot in the mouth. That's one of those guys you can get in there and pop it out. But he does hold on to it, and Sulphur will have the ball at their own 21-yard line with 29 seconds with Jacksonville. A 9-7 lead right now, and I'm not going to even tell you what some of the predictions were for this ball game so because they weren't very good. They, didn't, they weren't very flattering for Jacksonville, but so far the Fighting Indians have played tremendous football in this first half. Yeah, 9-7 in the bottom of the third. Yes. So it looks like Sulphur will kill this right here and just run it out. Stay with us. We'll have our All Smalls halftime report, or excuse me, coaching interview. We're going to do the Whataburger halftime report after that. We'll be talking to Jason Holman, the head coach for Jacksonville, and get his thoughts. As, White, uh, as the Wildcats appear to be just walking toward the sideline, just let this thing run out. They don't have to snap it here. So they'll let the last five seconds expire here. That'll bring us to halftime in the 2023 season opener score. Jacksonville 9, Sulphur Springs 7. And Matt will send it down to you and head coach Jason Holman. Uh, he's going to get his team in and make sure they're all going to the dressing room. He's unhooking everything. We'll get him in just a second. As the first half ends here at Tomato Bowl, if you're a fighting Indian fan, you've got to be happy. This high-powered Sulphur Springs offense, seven points right now. And here's Coach Holman. Coach, great first half. Uh, defense really has improved. Uh, frustrating Sulphur Springs in a lot of ways. But, hey, your offense really moving the ball. Like some of the, the play calls are diversified. The up-tempo's working. Your thoughts? Well, we did a great job of controlling the action. Um, Made some key stops defensively, made him punt the football, frustrated the quarterback, like you said. 
defending the run well. So uh, hats off the defense there. Lost one, gave up one big play on a play we thought we didn't tackle. He didn't step out of bounds, and you know, that's why you can't relax until the whistle blows. But overall, great effort defensively. Proud of the offense, moving the ball, and just keeping them off balance. Uh, offensive staff doing a great job of keeping it mixed up. Well, your offensive line, well, a question mark coming into the season. They played pretty daggum well in the first half. They had the one sack, though, and, and a couple other little glitches. But, Coach, you're moving the ball, running it. I mean, the zone blocking's working, and y'all are getting a good push. And three guys running the ball pretty da pretty well for y'all right now. Yeah, and we've got to keep rotating at running back. You probably heard me screaming yeah. a little bit. Uh, I just want to keep us as fresh as we can. We've got some quality runners. As you saw, little D.D. Mars got in there and busted yeah. some plays along with Jaden and Reese Hicks. And so we're very fortunate to have that, and we want to make sure we use that. So when we get in the fourth quarter, we're fresher. And, Coach, and before I let you go, i got to say another great thing in the first ball game, you're protecting the football. The, the, I mean, it's just doing a nice job. Last year in this game, you had four turnovers. That was the difference in the game. Right. And, that, yeah, we had one little ball pop loose. It took a good bounce out of bounds. But for the most part, yes, taking care of it, uh, you know, not making – and crucial mistakes. Now, Last thing, what do you got to do in the second half to keep this lead and win it? Just got to keep it up. We got to keep the momentum. Uh, we got to keep our composure. Obviously, we've got to stay hydrated. It's hot. I'm hot, you know. Uh, but I feel like our kids are in good shape for the most part. We're handling everything. Had a little unfortunate injury with Brendan Richards that I hope works out fine for him. But, um, you know, we just got to come out. We, get, we kick off, start the second half. You got to keep doing what we're doing defensively and keep the, keep the pressure on them. Coach, thanks. We'll talk to you after the game. Thank you. Head coach Jason Holman with the All Smiles halftime interview. Guys, I'm going to throw it back up to you in the booth. We'll do the stats, and when it gets time for Jacksonville to come down and do their halftime performance, I'll be right here. Sounds good, Matt. Thanks very much. And, folks, we're going to bring to you now a new segment. This one, a lot of fun. It's time for Ask the Indians. Zeke, Kai, I say Zeke. 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 Could be some. Me on top. Really? Yeah, I feel good. Yeah, I don't know about that. Oh, no. Were my feet in that shot? Okay, good. Yeah, this is my work. And we're back. It is halftime here at the Tomato Bowl. Jacksonville leading Sulphur Springs by a score of 9-7. to seven. Hope you enjoy the Ask the Indians feature. It sounds like Zeke Whitaker might have a future as a TikTok star for the Fighting Indians. Todd, do you think you could be a TikTok star? <laughs> Not me. Uh, I don't think so. Yeah, I, I think we I think we might have missed the missed the boat on that thing. So but nine seven here at the half, Jacksonville with the lead. Let's look at some of the numbers in a game that Todd really started out as a defensive struggle, kind of a I think Matt's word was a slobber knocker. It was. Um our Indians had a pretty balanced first half. We had sixteen first downs. We had 96 yards rushing and 117 yards receiving. So I think one of the things Coach Holman has said is he wanted a pretty balanced offense, and first half looks pretty good. Yeah, one of the things he uh, he talked about a few weeks ago when I had the opportunity to sit down with him was uh, wanting to keep the opposing 
uh, defense is guessing a little bit, kind of on their toes. And when you are able to run a balanced attack, you can do that. And so, and it looked like the up tempo he wanted to run worked pretty well. We snapped the ball quick a few times and had success. And I don't know if we had the defense a little off balance, but we definitely moved the ball well in, in those scenarios there. And so I thought that worked good. Yeah, and Ryan, um, I mean, I, I think coming into the ball game, one of the things we talked about was. Jacksonville kind of with this new look offense obviously so many guys graduating uh last year uh, looked pretty good through the first half it definitely did I know uh at ETBU when I played over there um our offense we were trying to snap the ball every 12 seconds and so seeing an up tempo from Jacksonville's a different look I haven't mm -hmm. seen that from I mean the five we years that, seen I've, it, no. that yeah. I've been doing the broadcast uh I can't remember seeing it from a Jacksonville offense, and it seems to be working pretty well, well pretty so well. far. Um, I, I will say, Matt mentioned them uh, running it during the scrimmage against Kaufman, and I was there, and this looks much faster tonight, yeah. I will say, than it did in that first scrimmage. Yeah, well, I mean, it obviously, is. that and that's what you hope you get. In those scrimmages, you know, you, you hope you kind of get your concepts down, and then obviously you, you keep drilling those things at practices, and, and, and then when the games count – you, you want to see it go to really even the next level. And, and yeah, it sounds like that's that's kind of what we're seeing here from, from the Indians so far. So that's uh, that's very encouraging, I think, if you're a fighting Indian fan, especially, uh, you know, with the losses from last year. Obviously, so many great players and, and, and so many question marks now. You know, how, how, how does this offense run? What are they going to look like? And, you know, so far so good, you got to say, especially against a Sulphur Springs team that uh, – Really, uh, really put it put it on Jacksonville a bit last year. Uh, definitely won, you know, won the yeah. turnover battle in that ball game. And, and I think and, it was closer than what the score showed. Yeah, no, I think game. you're right. I think you're right about that. But I think uh, you know Jacksonville doing it, as we heard Coach Holman say, doing a better job taking care of the ball yeah. as well, and 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 that's uh, that's paid off uh, as well. Let's let's look at some. Uh, Let's look at some, some individual. Some individual. Stats. That's 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 what that's I was looking, looking for. Hey, it's it. week yep. it's week one for everybody. <laughs> yeah, you got it. All right. First half rushing. Pretty interesting that the three main backs, Jaden Boyd, Didi Mares, Reese Hicks. Jaden had thirty eight yards rushing on eight carries. Didi had five carries for thirty seven yards, and Reese had Six carries for 33. Yeah, so really able to balance so really even that attack. There. Yep. Passing, Brady had 12 completions on 23 attempts for 117 yards and one touchdown. Any, you have a guess who the leading receiver was for us in the first half? Well, I know we called Jermaine Taylor's Jermaine name quite Taylor, a few times. Yeah. 78 yards receiving for the first half. So, on great four start. catches. Yeah, great four start catches, for the senior. Mm hmm. Yeah, and we talk about uh, with with those two guys. We know with with McCown and Taylor. We hope that's a uh, you know a combination that we uh, that we're able to call quite a bit this year. And, oh, and, yeah. and and we talked about how given time, Brady McCown can can find just about anybody with any with any kind of ball as that touchdown show. That was uh, he threw it well. Yeah, the he first really time. did, yeah, and he, he did. And so there was a couple other balls he threw deep that were really close. Yeah, you know, we, yeah. From here, it was hard to tell whether they caught it or not until That's the right. official made the That's call. That's right. Yeah, it was, it was close. But he, so, he's great, right. He's right throw. there when he's when he's given time, you know. And right. and more often than not, I've got to say, with the new look, uh, I kind of hate to keep sort of beating it, <laughs> you know, beating this into the ground. But the new look offensive line is that's a big thing. I mean, that's you know, as your offensive line goes, so goes your offense. And right. Got to say that more often than not in that first half, they gave McCown the time that he needed. To, to really, you know, get pretty comfortable back there for the most part. He took a few shots, but uh, a few hits, I mean. Mm -hmm. uh, but but I can only really think of, like, maybe two. Yeah. Yeah, like it was yeah I not, think so. It was and not very often, which we ran That the was ball. a concern we had talked about before the game yeah. just because everybody graduated. But we also ran they the did ball well. quite a bit. And we did and, run and the ball. And we ran the ball well yeah. in the first half. And so, you know, that takes some of that pressure off of mm -hmm. Brady, too. That's right. And, and – you know, you, you said it, Todd. The the word I think that you'd use to describe that half is balance, and that's exactly what you want to see. You know, if you're if you're Coach Holman and it was and Coach and it's McClendon. good to see that all three of the backs were using. Yeah, they're all having positive yardage, having success because yeah. 
we haven't. I think a few years ago we talked about going into the season having three backs. Yeah. And it fell apart that, real quick. Well, that's all, injuries. It's always just, the hope. We didn't yeah. really yeah, get to use the weapons we were hoping that year, but this looked real good for the first half. It sure did. It sure did. And Jacksonville able to hold on to the narrow lead here at the half. They're up 9-7. Our halftime stats brought to you by Randy Gorham, CPA. Let's take a look, Todd, at Sulphur Springs. Let's see if we can do that. All right. If your if your computer will <laughs> cooperate, technology is great. Except hey, well, when it's we did not. have to get a it's new app new. this year. Yeah, so we sure did. So I'm yeah. figuring out how to use it as we go yeah. here. Uh, Sulphur Springs rushing. Cameron Jefferson had two carries for ten yards, and uh, DeRose Luke one carry for four yards. Lots of lots of passing. Seven yeah, completions. 15 attempts for 123 yards. And I'm going to say the, the vast majority of that had to be to Skylar Lewis. Sounds like we seemed like we were calling his name the entire first half. Uh, that's true. That number six. Number six, Lewis had five catches for 40 yards. And a touchdown. And a touchdown. I was thinking his yardage should have been higher. But, yes, he had 40. Um, number seven, Jackson Hare had one catch for 51 yards. That was so, yeah. that long ball down the sideline. Yep. Yeah. With it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That one, I, f I feel like the Jacksonville defense has played really well throughout the first half. That was kind of the one blemish in the first half, and it just wasn't wrapping up well, and they kind of mm -hmm. slung him forward. We had forward him tackled. He just gave him slung him instead of holding on and, and yeah. pulling him down. That's right. Of course, you heard Matt talk about a, a, a big point of emphasis for Jacksonville in, the, in, in fall camp has been tackling as far as mm -hmm. actually getting, you know, getting a good wrap-up, getting the, the opposing player to the ground. And mm -hmm. for the most part, I think they, they did that well. well in the first half. Mm -hmm. But you're right. You miss one, it that turns into that big play. good example of, yes, but, make but sure you know, hold on. The other thing is you, you kind of – if, you, if you're going to have those situations, you you kind of want them in a non-district game. I mean, it, it's, it's good film. Like, it's it, it doesn't feel good to be – you know, on the defense when a play like that happens. Yeah. But that's very good film, yeah. you know, going into the next few weeks, getting ready for district action. And the the way we saw the defense play for the most part in the first half, I would be willing to bet that improves the next few weeks. I, oh, yes. I would think so, yeah, too. I think so. I would think so, too. And, you know, Jacksonville with the lead – yeah, correct. Yeah, that's that's wrong. I got to figure out okay. what's going on. I was with that, like, but we're yes. up nine seven at the half, <laughs> nine, seven. and yeah, I think not, that's I think right. if you told anybody before the game that we would be up nine to seven at half, I yeah. don't think they would have believed you. Yeah, yeah. Well, and it, you know, you heard Matt allude to it. I think I think all week, if you'd gone on any of the, you know, the message boards, the apps, uh, this is not how anybody saw this game going, and you know, it, it's good for Jacksonville to. I mean. To surprise some people and, 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 and get it, you know, obviously if you can open the season with a win, that's great. Now, you know, winning is winning these games, the non-district games, obviously is not the be-all, end-all. But you really want to start with the momentum. For sure. Uh, you want to start with a game where you can look back and see, you know, more positives than yeah. negatives. And, and so far, I think Jacksonville's got to be very happy. I mean, you heard, you heard Coach Holman say it. Uh, overall, you're, you're very happy with that first half performance, and and you just hope they can kind of, you know, kick on from from there. Uh, yeah, in it's the gonna, second it's half. It's going to take coming out in the third quarter and really just keeping the momentum that they had in the first half. You know, a lot of times we come out after halftime and it's kind of sluggish yeah. for the first few minutes, and uh, you know that's that's kind of what hurt us in a, in quite a few games last year. So coming out at the end of this halftime is going to be really key yep. to winning this game. And you said, you know, it is nice to win the first game. It sure. doesn't really matter sure. in the grand scheme of things sure. in terms of playoffs, but it feels good. It like does. It feels it does. really good to win the first game. And, I mean, a lot of times if you win the first game, you might win the next game, whether you right. should or not, just that, because you won the first game that's right. and you had the momentum. Mm -hmm. That's right. And, and obviously Jacksonville going uh, into White House next week. White House took a – Took one kind of on the chin uh, last night. So, yep. you know, if you can take some momentum in next week, maybe, you you know, you, you grab that one and then, you know, may, bef before long you've got a, a little bit of a snowball effect and, and, you know, you roll right into district. So, um, but you got to take it one play at a time. One play at a time. Obviously, if you're Jacksonville. And, you know, a big part of tonight's going to be uh, 
what's the conditioning look like late in the ball game? I mean, for the sure. heat, the heat, with the heat. And, and everything is, is has been an issue, of course. And so, you know, it's, it's good to have the momentum. It's good to have the lead, uh, but it's also good to have a break right now. I know oh, if you're yeah. Jacksonville and and kind of get re reset and uh, and replenished for the second half. But uh, so far, so good here at Tomato Bowl. Jacksonville leading Sulphur Springs nine seven. Thanks to Todd for coming along for the first half stats. Uh, brought to you by Randy Gorham CPA, your hometown CPA since 1984. Of course, Randy, the mayor of Jacksonville as well. He's going to join us um, in uh, a few weeks. A few weeks. He's going to join us on homecoming, yep. I believe, on mm-hmm. October. I believe that's October the 5th. It's September 15th. I'm sorry, September yep. the 15th. I'm getting ahead of myself <laughs> uh, with Pine Tree in town. But we'll have an opportunity to talk to Randy in the pregame. So we do appreciate all his support. Of fighting Indian football and these halftime and postgame stats here on JISD Live. It looks like the fighting Indian band getting ready to take the field. We're going to flip it around and we'll bring back in the man in the hat. Montgomery is the Cherokee Charmers and the fighting Indian band getting ready to perform. Matt, are you with us? Yeah, I'm right here. All the right. Waterburger halftime report presents the Jacksonville halftime show. First up, the Cherokee Charmers. Under the direction of first year director Maddie Montgomery, no relation. Set to go here. Let's listen in to the Cherokee Charmers with music provided by the JHS band. Watch now as the Charmers perform an exciting palm routine to Land of a Thousand Dances. Cherokee Charmers performing here at halftime, along with the JHS band providing the music. Again, the Charmers under the direction of Maddie Montgomery and assisted by Tiffany Alexander. The Charmers are under the direction of Maddie Montgomery and Tiffany Alexander. Ladies and gentlemen, the award-winning Cherokee Charmers. Jacksonville Twirlers now making their way Onto the field. They're directed again this year by Brianne G. And now, introducing the Jacksonville Indian Majorettes, directed by Brianne G. Twirler officers for 2023-24 are Junior Lieutenant Angeles Grimaldo, Junior Lieutenant Alyssa Wright. First Lieutenant, Juliana Salazar. And your Captain, Natalie Joseph. This week's Twirler of the Week is Andrea Tavera. Watch now as the Twirlers perform to the Elvis Presley Classic, Viva Las Vegas.
Jacksonville High School Majorettes performing to Elvis's Viva Las Vegas. Thank you very much. Nice job by the Majorettes. You're watching the Waterburger Halftime Report. Jacksonville leading Sulphur Springs by a score of 9-7 to seven at the half. Now the Jacksonville Sweepstakes award-winning high school band under the direction of Donnie Barrier in year number 10 as the band director. Getting ready to perform here at Tomato Bowl. And now, JISD is proud to present the Jacksonville Fighting Indian Band. The band is under the field direction of senior drum majors, Brennan Hack, Juan Pablo Hernandez, and Luis Ortega. Tonight, the band will perform a traditional military drill to K.L. King's Pride of Arizona March. Now at the center of the field, one of the most decorated military marching bands in the great state of Texas. That classic look, that awesome sound, that cry heard across the land. <laughs> the Jacksonville Fighting Indian Band. of Donnie Barrier, Preston Parker, Preston Long, Kind of an abbreviated performance for Jacksonville as the halftime clock was running down. I think Sulphur may have taken Sulphur Springs. Halftime performance might have used up a little bit more time than what, uh, what we thought it would. So nevertheless, a great performance by the Jacksonville High School Band. Guys, are you with me? Still on break, I understand, okay. All right, as the band moves past me here, we'll try to scoot out of here. I want to give some halftime scores here before we get this second half kickoff going. Man, some wild ones tonight. Of course, let's start with last night. Next week's opponent, White House, last night was defeated by North Forney, 6A Forney, North Forney by a score of 55-33. North Forney scored on every single offensive possession against the White House Wildcats. Jacksonville, of course, will again be at Wildcat Stadium next week in White House. Longview lost last night to McKinney, 23-21. Not a, a total shocker, but a bit of a surprise as the Lobos came in very highly ranked. Locally, Alto losing right now 35 to nothing to Shelbyville at the half. Tyler Lee, excuse me, John Tyler, Tyler High, 14-7 over the Marshall Mavericks at the half or check that seven minutes to go in the third. In a couple of weeks, Jacksonville will be heading to Crandall to play the Pirates right now in the third quarter with eight minutes to go. Forney leading Crandall by a score of 28 to three. Henderson Lions, one of Jacksonville's district opponents, leading Texas, Texarkana Liberty Isle by a score of 14 to seven. That's a halftime score. Also at the half, Palestine leading Nacogdoches 29 to 18. That is a halftime score. At the half, Mount Pleasant leading Pittsburgh 24-7. And in a major matchup of monster teams, 
over in Kilgore at RA St. John. The Carthage Bulldogs are leading Kilgore at the half by a score of 23 to 20. Heck of a game going on over there. At halftime in Lufkin, the Panthers are leading Tyler Legacy by a score of 25-7. Lindale, one of Jacksonville's district opponents, over Kaufman, a team Jacksonville scrimmaged a couple of weeks ago. Lindale leading at the half over Kaufman, 35 to 18. The Rusk Eagles down at the half, eight to nothing to Fairfield. In another major contest going on over in Gilmer, the number three ranked Chapel Hill Bulldogs are leading Gilmer by a score of 34-33. That is a halftime score as well. Hallsville tied up 14 all with Terrell. Longview Pine Tree, a team that will be coming in here in week four for homecoming leading Van 17 to 14. That ball game, six minutes to go in the third. A lot of these ball games moved on a little bit further. They had maybe a 7 o'clock kickoff. Halftime about over here in Jacksonville. We're glad you've been listening and watching the Waterburger halftime report. Jacksonville leading 9-7 to seven over Sulphur Springs. And, guys, um, it, it's been a, a fast-moving first half. Can't believe we're already about to kick off the second half. Yeah, it has, Matt, and not the score anybody would have predicted. Yeah, I heard you guys talking about it. I mentioned it earlier. Just a lot of people, as you said, Aaron, on the message boards, all the prognosticators really had. And a lot of times, you know, you look at some of these and, here comes Jacksonville now to the run through with a nice crowd on hand welcoming welcoming the tribe back out with the lead. But yeah, there's a, a lot of people look at who's coming back, how many lettermen, what was last year's record. It just doesn't matter sometimes. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. And this game's not over, it's just half over. But Jacksonville with a two point lead. Let's see if the defense can come out for Jacksonville because Sulphur Springs deferred to the second half. They'll get the football first. Let's see. If Jacksonville defensively can come out and get a stop, try to build on that 9-7 lead. Don't have a report yet on Brendan. How you doing there, Brendan? What is it? Huh? MCL? All right. So an MCL. Yep. You hear from straight from Brendan, Brendan there, Richards yep. himself. Yep. Disappointing. Certainly it is. Thoughts and prayers for a quick recovery for him. And sometimes those MCLs can let's go, boy. Sometimes those MCLs can. Uh, sometimes they're not as bad as tearing the ACL. Is what I'm trying to say. Sometimes you can sprain your MCL. And I'm sure that he'll get uh, examined for that. So prayers for Brendan to see, make sure that uh, it's not anything more serious. So Jacksonville will kick off. Jesus Nunes has the ball teed up, dropping back four. The Sulphur Springs at Wildcats is Tristan Hankins, a 6'4 wide receiver senior. So the Fighting Indians with a 9-7 lead at the half. We're ready to go to kick this thing off in the second half. Jesus has it teed up for Jacksonville. Let's get it going. Here's Aaron Swink. And another short kickoff. Fielded fair caught by the up man right about the 28-yard line. We've seen that multiple times tonight. It was Wyatt Watson that time with a fair catch. So the Fighting Indians did a nice job tackling. You heard Jason Holman in the halftime coach's interview talk about how pleased he was with the Jacksonville defense. Gave up a couple of plays that I uh, wish he wouldn't have, but got to be pleased with the way they played in the first half. Let's see if they can continue that here as we start this third quarter. Sulphur with the ball at their own 31st down. So driver will come out with two receivers on his left side, a tight formation, now moves a man in motion over blocking on that left side. The handoff goes that way. Got a tackle. And a big gainer in first down yardage. That's Diddy Luke. Gets the start in the second half, and it's been rolling who we were looking at. Now here's Sulphur Springs after getting a first down. They're in an up-tempo look here. Yeah, so we'll see if Luke continues. He does. He gets the handoff, and Jacksonville able to stuff him up, And but Luke refused to be tackled. Well, I'll tell you what. You talk about yeah, that's you talk a, about how slight he was, he is, but, boy. Well, that, 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 that's a squat run. I yeah. mean, if, if you're squatting, you know, 250 pounds, you can tell when they move the pile with their legs like that. They can squat a lot, and he's not very big, but he's got 
obviously some leg strength right there. Should have been about a two-yard gain. He gets five. So two plays, 18 yards all of a sudden for Sulphur Springs. So we'll see if Driver opens it up or if he goes back to Luke, and he does. And why not? It's worked so well for him. Got a tackle. I'm seeing some shoulder bumps out there. Didn't see that in the first half. It's not a varsity tackle right there. Got to wrap up, pull down. That's what the Jacksonville did such a nice job of in the first half. So three plays, two first downs for Sulphur Springs, and all of a sudden they're in Jacksonville territory at the fight in Indian 47. So the Jacksonville defense needs to stiffen here as we talked about how well they played in the first half. This is a left-sided stretch play, a big gainer. Flag. Flag comes in, though. Got to be a hold. you got to think on that on that corner over there. Well, it was, a, it was a stretch play, and they were getting to the outside, and it looked like one of the linemen reached out and – Jackson with a nice job sliding down the line of scrimmage. So let's see the call here. I'm 0 for 2 so far. So the way the flag was You're, thrown from the back judge toward the line of scrimmage, it looks like it's got to be a hole. Yeah, I mean, that's the area of a hole for sure. Yeah. So I hope you're right. We'll see. Yeah, I saw number seven. Yeah, that's number, the call. Yeah, it's number number uh, 71. Excuse me, number 70, Aiden McCarroll. He's the one with uh, the guilty look, if you will. You yeah. know, you can kind of tell. Kind of got one hand on your side right there, and the other one's kind of you're kind of shaking your head a little bit. Yeah, McCarroll, the sophomore, and that might have been a sophomore mistake. So it's marked from the spot of the foul, and that's going to push the ball way back. The ball was at the Jacksonville 47. Now it's at the Sulphur Springs 43. So that's a nice penalty for Jacksonville right there because D. Rose Luke got some carries in the first half, and we, we, you know, we thought it was going to be Malachi Rowland, the returning starter. We haven't seen him that much tonight. So first down and 20. So two left, one right for Driver. Luke still in the backfield. Uh, this time Driver, a little RPO. He's going to keep and make his way back over midfield. Trent Powell did a nice job coming up from his linebacker position and lunged at Driver and got him up in the air before number 24 for Jacksonville. That's Darius Hinton, the senior, coming over and wrapping him up and hitting. Yeah. It's kind of fighting a big toe injury. And I was going to say, Zadarius, a little slow to get up yeah, there. Yeah, he, he's been fighting a big toe injury since training camp started. He's going to check out, and Dorsey will check in for him. And they'll slide Dorsey over to the right defensive end or defensive tackle position, and, yeah, and we already Devereaux seen, will come over to the left side. I've already seen Jordan Dorsey make a highlight play on a punt coverage. This time the handoff goes to the right side and a little gashing run there. Out to about the 40, called about the 46. A good tackle by Carson Check that, Shoemaker. Yeah, I have a Shoemaker on the tackle and he just came up and wrapped him up nicely. Did the senior. Third down, big play here, third and seven. Can you get off the field if you're Jacksonville defensively? Sulphur Springs been able to kind of grind it out uh, on this drive. Jacksonville may have jumped. There's the play. flag. Free play. You said it. Watch the ball. That 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 happened in both scrimmages. That obviously it's something if you're Sulphur Springs, if you if you scouted those two scrimmages, Jacksonville was prone to do. Not watching the ball. The hard count got them. So the free play didn't work for Sulphur Springs. They'll take the penalty. It'll make it third and two now. They haven't moved it yet. Well, waiting on that. This was a little slow tonight to get things going. Can't say anything bad about you officials, know, guys. There's such a shortage of them. Yeah, that's right. I we, mean, you got to – I mean, it's, it's, it is tough now to get your crew – to get a crew. You'll see a lot more Thursday night games this year where a guy will have – crew will have to work on a Thursday night varsity game, trying to work on a Friday night. Just not enough referees. People don't want to do it anymore. Yeah, I've got <laughs> – I have some opinions yeah. uh, about that, but uh, – I do too, I but keep we'll move on. Myself. Driver going to keep this time. And Fumble, ball comes out. Ball's out. 
Jacksonville's going to fight to the bottom of the pile. Michael Miles stripped yeah, that he ball. he sure did. He stripped it from Driver, who had the first down. Oh, no, they get it. I don't see any. Ah, oh, they got it. Yeah, I was going to say I hadn't seen a signal yet, but now ah. Sulphur Springs. What an opportunity missed. And a penalty marker looks like might have come in as well. See about that. Well, you got a Sulphur Springs player leaving the field with a helmet coming off. Brandon Vasquez, one of their top offensive linemen. He's going to have to check out for one play. Now let's see what the call is right here. Personal foul, face mask On against defense. Jacksonville. Good. You know, Driver got stood up, and he was, he was fighting for more yards. Michael Miles came in and stripped the ball, and it looked like when Driver was reaching down to get the ball, that's when the face mask, it wasn't. It wasn't a grab, like pulled him back, but they grazed it, and that's all. That's automatic 15 now. Yeah, we were just, of course, talking, talking about, about that earlier in the yeah. ball game that there, there is no. It, it's been been this way for a while now, but there yeah. is no incidental face mask anymore. Ah, it's just a killer penalty right there. Pushes the ball all the way down to the Jacksonville 22-yard line. First down, Sulphur Springs on the opening drive of this third quarter. So, so far. So bad for Jacksonville in setting the tone and <laughs> getting a three and out. That has not happened here to start this third quarter. Now you just want to keep him out of the end zone. Yeah, 825 and counting here, third quarter. As the handoff this time again oh, no. goes straight ahead inside the 20. Ball out again. This time, this time Jacksonville Jacksonville's got it. got it. It's Drew Dials with the recovery. Called his name a few times yeah. already. Dials, Dials comes away with it. Again, we you know last year in this ball game, Jacksonville had four turnovers. Sulphur Springs had one in that 21-6 Sulphur Springs win. That's what happens when you turn the ball over. I mean, it, it changes games. I mean, it's so it's so trite and so rote that uh, when you say it, you kind of go, well, duh. But there you go. Sulphur Springs on the drive. Yeah, but in the red zone, they fumble. Yeah, things like that are trite for and, and wrote for a reason they, because they're true. They're true. Absolutely. Mayors. So now the handoff to Dee Dee Mayors again. And for the first time, Number 14, man, that this, is a, this, ball this ball game, Sulphur Springs gets right to him. That, that, that is a slow whistle that we have tonight. I mean, you know, usually when the forward progress is stopped, you, you get a quicker whistle. But yeah, that that's was, right. They let that one go. Man, he was all the way back to the 10. The ball's on the 20. Blow the whistle. A couple of yards, so second and eight. This time McCowan, a little bit of time. Looks to the right side, throws. Got a man now, makes one man miss and another. Jermaine. Goes Taylor. He's down over the 35. He's got the Bill McCray Ford first down. What a nice throw McCowan's by Brady McCowan, that three, back Jermaine shoulder Taylor. throw. It's great timing between McCown and Taylor. So the Indians with a little breathing room here at their own 31 now playing up tempo. Hand off to Mars again, and he will battle for hard yards out near the 40. And he does. We talked about this already, but, boy, he just runs downhill, man. Yep, he does. A little injury, quick injury for Jacksonville. The sophomore Calvin Boyd getting up slowly. He'll check out Anthony Martini. The senior will check in for him. Coming off okay, he'll be back. Maris picks up five. Second and five. He'll check out Jaden Boyd back in at running back for Jacksonville. As Jason Holman said in the halftime interview, you gotta keep those running backs rotating. They're doing that right here. So this time it's Boyd and the big man. Out to midfield and more for the Bill McCray Ford first down. Man, I just cringe when I see those defensive backs coming up and taking shots at Jaden Boyd in his knee. You know, he's had two ACL injuries his freshman year and last year as a junior. It's one of the fastest recoveries from an ACL injury I've ever heard of for Jaden Boyd after week four's injury against Pine Tree, and he was back playing baseball in the spring. Picks up a first down. For Jacksonville. Oh, my Trips goodness. Trips right, one left, Ball bad on snap. It. McCown just got to get back on it. He does. Good heads up play by him. But well, he just boy, wasn't that looking. He yeah. wasn't looking. I say heads up, heads up to recover. Gosh. He looked away at the sidelines for the play. He sure did. And the ball got snapped. 
Good grief. First game. <laughs> First games are weird, man. Every, every time there's a mistake, that's what you say. That's it. It's automatic. That's First it. game. That's it. That works in the uh, works for the broadcast crew as well. So. Yes. This time, McCown got some time. Flag flies, though. Is it offsides? Yeah. Throwing at the line yeah. of scrimmage. They didn't stop the play for procedure. There is a marker on the field. Yeah, it looks like Taylor. Taylor might have gotten an early Jermaine jump. Jermaine jumped a little early. Yep. Man, they take for – I mean, look. I mean, I'm not grappling. I want him to get the call right, but – I mean, if it, if he jumped, do you have to have three guys come in and talk about it? Look. Yeah, and and don't gripe, Matt, because you're on camera right now. <laughs> okay, <laughs> it's procedure. You, you were there for a second. Yeah. Oh, okay. The big camera. Yeah. Like the scoreboard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, they'll bring that one back. So after the bad snap and the penalty of five, we've seen this movie before. Right late in the second quarter, when Jacksonville got down to the twenty, what twenty-two? Yep. And it just blew up. So now it's second down, 24 to go for the first. Wait, yeah, now they're moving it back. Ooh, that, is that 24? Let's see, 10, yep, about 25. Oh, come on, Brady. Snap gets away from McCown again. He's got to fall on it again. And so Jacksonville just continues to go in the wrong direction. That, that's Brady. I mean, I don't – he just – he just took his eye off the ball. It was a good fumble. snap, came right back to him, and it just didn't secure it. Loss on the play makes it third down and really long. <laughs> Chip. <laughs> Chip. Chip Hitman. I like Chip. Calls it like he sees it on the PA here at Tomato Bowl. 36. 36. Yeah. Wow, what's your third and 36 play? <laughs> Trips right, one left. Boyd, the back. Don't expect it to go to him. McCown rolls right, looks right, throws. Got him in, but just way too much to do. Look at this. We got uh, McCown's got his helmet knocked off. Yep. No call? How does that happen? He's slow to get up as McCown taking taking a breather. He's okay. No, no call? I mean, a quarterback gets clipped like that, knocks his helmet off. No call. Yeah, that's that's hard to believe. Referee was right there. Fourth and 27. So here's Jesus Nunez. Done a nice job punting the football for Jacksonville. Wasn't expected to be the punter this year, but he has stepped in nicely to take that job. Of course, he's the kicker as well. Jacksonville was missing somebody as Alex Para checks in. One of the protectors back there. So delay a yep. game on Jacksonville. Yep, so just – Yeah, what's another five? <laughs> I was just say move it back five and just tack it on. So if you're if you're Jesus Nunez, you've got to just think, well, that's delay a game. more that's yardage that's I can get. So Sulphur Springs has dropped two back. See, if you've noticed. And yep. One of them is the dangerous one, Skylar Lewis. So it's hard to do a directional punt when you got twins back there. Both standing on their own 42, so you'd think the Wildcats could get pretty good field position, especially the pressure they put on Nunez. Yeah, it's nice. Get a high one away. It is a good one. Fair caught. And he almost, pretty much right in his tracks. I tell you what, this this the, the referee in the white hat right now. If you see him out there with that 34 talking to him, 34's got a case. Yep. I mean, he he really does. He's He's upset. He, he got hit kind of late, and the referee's just ignoring him. And this guy's letting him play. Let me just say it like that. Brady got his helmet knocked off. Nothing. That guy kind of got yanked a little bit there at the, after the play. Nothing. He's just walking away from him, whistling. Fast moving third quarter, just under four minutes remaining already. Still 9 7 Jacksonville. And Sulphur Springs drove all the way down the field a moment ago, lost it on the fumble in the red zone. So now from the Wildcat 46, the handoff. Nice job. Good job by Jacksonville getting into the backfield and sticking Jefferson. Tackle made by number 30, Michael Miles. 
Michael Miles again, and no gain on the play. Second we talked team. about him. Yeah, that all was, the tackles he had last year, and he's stacking them up already. Yeah, that was Drew Dials actually on that tackle. Sorry, I'm not gonna. I mean, he Drew Dials is the one that made that tackle. I don't. Yeah, got, I don't want to take that away from Drew oh, either. Okay. Thanks yeah. for, thanks I mean, for that I, clarification. Well, that's who Chip called. Chip called Michael Miles. Yeah, he did. All right, kid, got him. Left side screen. Got a tackle. And pushed out right at the marker. That has been the most successful play for Sulphur Springs tonight is that little bubble screen with twins and the other receiver doing a nice job of stock blocking yep. and the guy going right off that block. That, that's been where Sulphur Springs has been lethal tonight offensively. Picks up a nice gain of about eight, so it's third and one. So just over three minutes to go here in the third quarter. Fast moving, as you said, Matt. 9-7, Jacksonville still in the lead. This time it'll just be driver who will keep and burst ahead for first down yardage. Look at that in play. On the far side of the field, Yeah, Lewis, the receiver for Sulphur Springs, I mean, he was uh, – Really lighting it up out there with Kincaid of Jacksonville right in front of the official. The official just kind of went in and said, okay, guys, break it up, break it up. I mean, just real lax, easy going. Yeah, and it's getting to the point, you know, you can you can hear the Jacksonville coaching staff with – Yeah, you just heard one, one Coach Simmons right there. He well, said, the, protect us. Exactly. The concern is for the players at this point. So Look out. A handoff left side. Good tackling. And a burst. Good oh, tackle go. as well. But There's another penalty, and now we got something else. See, this is what happens yeah. when you don't yeah, call th stuff. Th that's exactly right. I mean, right. this is what happens that's when you it. let them do this stuff. That's it. And this is what I've been saying since the second quarter. You have got to call the ball game. You have got to call stuff. You can't let Jason Holman's having a cock with him right now. When you let that stuff go, this is what happens. Yep. You call that stuff early, yeah, they I mean, don't do it. You can – you can obviously say to the players, look, you got to stay, you know, you got you got to stay level-headed. You you've got to control yourself, but the thing is, there are officials out there for a reason. Absolutely. I mean, that's uh that's part of it. So they'll they'll, they'll have to sort this all out. I saw Zadarius Hinton flying down in the backfield. Like somebody threw him down, he got up with his arms up, the flag came out. I'm not sure what, I mean, if you say it's on sulfur because he got thrown, they'll turn around and throw it on Jackson. I don't know. I can't figure it out. They, they have made some calls tonight that I'm like, what? On the flea flicker, they said that we weren't line, on the line of scrimmage. Remember that minute ago they got called back? Yep. That was, it said he said we weren't on the line of scrimmage lined up right. Well, when you go to the line of scrimmage, you look at the official and you say it, and he nods his head yes or no. That's or right. Yeah. Well, they said that we weren't lined up. What? So they're sorting it out still. Let's see. I mean, the, the official in the white hat, he, he, he's walking around like he's Biden or something. He's seeing me staggering, you know, just kind of, I don't know where. Sorry. <laughs> it's week one, Matt. I know, sorry. <laughs> Woo. There he goes, finally. Personal foul. <laughs> Hand to the face against Jacksonville, I mean, and then another personal foul. Yeah. I don't know how they're going to get to the bottom of all this. It, it's yeah, an offsetting penalty. That's right. Yeah. It's offsetting. So they'll just do the play over again. Now you just see – you hope you didn't have any ejections out of, all of it, out of that. So. so 2.40 to go here in the third quarter as they – Got to get this straightened out. And but, but look at, I mean, he's got white hair. You see him? Yeah. The official? Okay. Yeah, yeah, I see him, man. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Let it go. <laughs> Join us after hours for the JSD Live political podcast. <laughs> Yikes. Could be a little one-sided. <laughs> oh, boy. So it's first down still. Uh, they just replay it. So replaying the down. Driver takes the snap. Hands off now. Left side running. Big block over there 
And a big gain near the marker. And still. Continue. Yeah, I mean, extracurricular just, jawing going on. I mean, it's uh, that time that was Lewis. Up by number, 19, number six, Trevor. Skyler Lewis, the leading Second receiver, down. just, you know, being jerked off the field by his teammates. I'm not sure what that was all about, but he's coming off the field. It's composure. And, and you heard you heard Jason Holman say that at the half. It's about keeping your composure. That's right. So this time, driver going to hand off again up the middle. Jacksonville plugs the hole that time. Now, number 22, Jefferson, the ball carrier. Jefferson stuffed that oh, time. Oh, come on. A flag for what? Now you're going to start calling that stuff. Can't start right it's, now. It's, yeah, I was going to say. It's the that end of the a, third quarter, yeah. and now you're going to tighten up. That huh. is that is officiating 101. I'm not. I'm not. I'm just saying you can't not call stuff and then tighten up later. You can't do that. Well, it's hard because then you don't know as a player. You kind of don't know where the line is. Well, I mean, it's just um, you know, officials are human. They make you know mistakes, and maybe they decide oh, we're going to let that go. It's first game. Before you know it, you got people punching and shoving, and then you try to tighten it up. So they got another personal foul, unsportsmanlike. It's going to be on Sulphur Springs this time. Carson Shoemaker, who was in on the tackle, he got up, and then the flag flew, and he threw his hands up like, what did I do? Yeah. So, I mean, when players don't know if they committed a foul or not, or a personal foul, <laughs> that's strange. Yeah, that, uh, again, that just kind of means you, don't, you, I mean, you sort kinda, of don't know where. Yeah, you don't know where you stand. You where the boundaries know, are, where the lines are. You know if you've done something. You do. And he came up like he, I didn't do anything. As it turns out, he was right. He was right. But he was acting like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe you threw a flag on me. So, anyway, that brings it to third down and 17 now. Whistles blow this one dead. Should be too much time. Blake Lock, no, it's 18 on there. I'm sorry. Timeout. Jacksonville. Yeah, Jacksonville ah. took a timeout. So There we go. That makes more sense. So timeout with 139 to go in the third. Yeah, fast-moving third quarter, 9-7. Jacksonville Man. still clinging to the lead. This is like a NFC Central game from the 80s. Man. 9-7. Next week, we head up Highway 69 for to our old rival White House. Wildcats playing last night, getting beat by 6A North Forney, 55-33. White House has a lot of guys coming back, so uh, this is a very talented White House team. Jacksonville will see next week, and it sure would be nice to slide over there 1-0. and You can hang on right here. Yeah, lots of. Lots of ups and downs and twists and turns left between now and then. No, if, yeah. if this quarter has been any indication. Yeah. So Jacksonville with a timeout. And one thing we haven't seen that I thought we were going to see was the timeouts, or maybe that's what this is. Timeouts uh, for yeah. you know the heat, yeah. taking a break. Well, I, st I still see three. No, well, it's, that's it's three on Sulphur Springs. Well, Jacksonville's total is down to two. But so, I mean, what I'm saying is I haven't seen any of those timeouts that were supposed to be scheduled. Maybe the coaches decided and Fish decided that it's really not that bad down here. Of course, I'm not, I yeah. don't have a bunch of pads on running around. But. Yeah, well, I mean, I think just looking at the way that the temperatures had been for the week obviously that was probably the plan i don't know exactly what the temperature was at kickoff but um i i think maybe it was <laughs> it's well right okay so ryan travis just told me it's currently 92 so i don't know i think i would want a break <laughs> i would want a few more breaks uh but maybe it wasn't quite as hot at kickoff as they thought it would be yeah and once that sun got behind the press box on both sides, actually on the Jacksonville side, and so it kept the shade on Sulphur's side because they were in the sun right until about 7.15ish or something like that. Then it started working its way up. It wasn't so bad. So maybe they just said, we're just going to forgo those timeouts and just keep playing because it's a fast-moving first half. They didn't have any of those 
schedule timeouts like they talked about. But this right here is a long, long timeout. It is. So what they did was they put the timeout back up on the board, and just what we've been talking about, so, I think this is one of so the scheduled an official, timeouts. So this will be an official timeout. Yeah. That's right, yep. I think they decided just to call it right here, which, man, I don't know how you judge that because you gave Sulphur Springs a lot of time to talk about what to do here on third and 17. <laughs> I'm looking at it from that standpoint. Yeah, exactly. Here we go, back to play. So third and 17, Jacksonville looking to make the stop on what has been a wild drive as driver, little RPO, rolls left, throws left, and wow. No catch. Oh. Uh, no catch. Great defense. Yep, yep. Just, just out of the reach. It looked like he might have come up with a big first down, but uh, yeah, good defense is right. Yep. Jermaine Taylor over there on the coverage, and then he had some help from Reese. Oh. Martha. Penalty. Yeah, Jermaine, was it Jermaine Ryan that ended up without a helmet? <laughs> well, that's is that not that's not a penalty if he gets knocked off. I well, mean, right. But you wonder if – Wait a minute. We'll have to see what they call here because you wonder if maybe it was – Yeah. An offensive pass interference or maybe – they're going to call personal foul face, face mask, mask Jacksonville on Jacksonville the call. That's an automatic first down. Wow. That's unbelievable. Yeah, the call went against Jacksonville, guys. Although I didn't see that. I didn't either. They just broke up the pass. That's guys yeah, a and kill. And it was Jermaine. Now, I didn't see anything else, but it was Jermaine that ended up with no helmet. Jermaine Taylor. So, and Jason Holman wants an explanation, and I don't blame him. The officials are so confused right now. Face mask, face mask it, indicated against the fighting Indians. Result first down. Of the penalty is an automatic first down. First and ten. Well, is spotted at the you still have the referee talking to the linesman. I and and now here comes another official. So they don't. I, I really don't think they know. That's just really bad. I'm not exactly sure where. Maybe this crew hasn't worked together much. Now they're blowing the whistle and they're going to talk some more. Yeah. You know, with a lot of retirements by officials. They've had to rearrange crews, and you may, right. you may be on a crew with some guys that you don't know, and you got to learn their you know, how to work with them. Yeah, that's right. And a lot of these crews that they, they have stuck together, they stick together for a long time, Matt. Yeah. I think it, is that normally how that yeah, works? Yeah, it is. You've got a crew, and you'll go with those guys maybe eight or ten years. You do, exactly. But then as you start having those retirements and different things, then then yeah, you do have to learn learn how to work with those guys. And so now Jason Holman is getting an explanation, or Maybe what passes for an explanation. So now with what? This, with uh, so what are they doing? Are they kicking Jermaine out of the ball game? Well, it looks what? like he's got to come out of play, Matt. He's got to come out at least one play because he did lose his helmet. Gosh, I'm moly. I was just making sure they weren't ejecting him. You know how that the way it's been called tonight. Who knows? Yeah. And so now drivers were back to play. He drops back. He looks, steps up in the pocket. Deep ball, one-on-one -on -one over there. He's got the man for the Wildcat score. And that Lewis. is. Oh, there's flags. Yeah, that is a huge momentum swing. And then there's some flags. Of course there are. Yeah, that'll that'll go against the Wildcats. I don't know. Uh, you would think. I, well, hope, I mean, it better. Their quarterback literally ran over to our defender in the corner of the end zone and taunted him. Yeah. Yeah. Dri uh, we, I mean, driver rubbing that one in. When are they going to start ejecting some people for doing stuff like that? I mean, you just don't. It's just crazy. They're going to do it on the kickoff. It's going to be again. Good call, Ryan. It's it is going to go against Sulphur Springs, and they'll do it on the kickoff. And so with the score, the Wildcats have taken the 13 to nine lead with 120 to go here in the third quarter. And just 
to confirm. Here's the the call on sportsmanlike conduct against Sulphur Springs. Yeah, and it's the quarterback driver. I just saw him. I read his lips. He said on four. And so here's the extra point attempt brought to you by Neighbors Coffee. Kick is it is good. And so with 120 to go in the third quarter, the score now, Sulphur Springs 14 and Jacksonville 9. We'll take a short break and come back. This is Fighting Indian Football on JISD Live. Since 2004, Legends Old Time Burger Cafe has been the home of Jacksonville's best old-fashioned hamburgers. Hand-battered chicken strips, chicken fried steak, fries, and onion rings are the best around. Legends, home of Jacksonville's best old-fashioned hamburger. Congratulations is Jacksonville's source for a full line of awards and engraving services. But we don't stop there. You'll want to check out our examples of creative, personalized gifts, too. Congratulations also serves East Texas as a promotional products dealer. We are passionate about sourcing just the right items. With our laser capabilities, we can also design and install acrylic signage or graphics. Want to see samples of our work? Go no further than the tomato bowl entry. We're especially proud of the arrowheads. Visit Congratulations Showroom or website soon, and let's make something amazing together. That 100% beef Whataburger takes two hands and all of your attention. So yeah, now is the time to sneak that fry. Good thing there's plenty to savor. Good thing there's Whataburger. And we're back. 120 to go here in the third quarter. Score now. Sulphur Springs 14, Jacksonville 9 after a an eventful <laughs> scoring drive for the Wildcats with the scoring drive summary. Here's Todd Travis once again. Todd? That was a nine play drive, covered 55 yards, ending with a touchdown, putting Sulphur Springs up 14 to 9. And the kick on the way. The chase Hicks. Indians back with Reese Hicks, but he's going to try to make something out of this. He's stacked right, up at about the 28 yard line. That's where Jacksonville will take over. And now that drive had, if, if I count, if I'm counting it right, it, four personal fouls on it and a face mask. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> so really sloppy. Lack of composure for by both teams. Yeah, it's a hot night. Everybody's chippy. Yep. So Jacksonville will have the ball with 118 remaining in this third quarter down now by five. They'll start this drive at their 28 yard line. So Jacksonville trying to answer back. So who's running back? Oh, there he comes. Score. I was about to say. Yeah, Boyd in. A missing somebody. A little bit late. Five on the play clock. Four now. Got to go. You got to go. Gotta go. And ball, snap gets away again from McCown as he was not ready for the snap. And he <laughs> chases him back inside the 10. I don't know why Brady's looking away. I mean, you do not look away. Third time that's happened. Maybe, maybe it's the center. Snapping the ball, not supposed to. I don't know. Good grief. 16-yard loss puts you on the 11. Your own 11. So 110 and counting. Jacksonville backed up now in the shadow of their own goalpost. McCowan going to try to throw deep to get out of it, but throws incomplete. And there's McCowan taking another one in the mouth with his helmet getting knocked off. And... I, I'm not. I'm not sure how you could get your helmet knocked off like that and it not be some kind of a personal foul penalty. Official now. Now what? The white hat sending him off the field? Serious? Are you kidding me? Yeah, I'm gonna say he's got to sit out of play because he lost the helmet. Well, it's because he got it knocked off. What are you kidding? So two right, one left. Hicks checks in at quarterback. Hicks. Of course, he was the quarterback in Frankston last year, so we'll see how he runs the Jacksonville offense on this play. He'll keep it. Will Hicks. Face mask. Up the middle he goes. 
And a fighting Indian down behind the play. Number two, Reese Hicks, the ball carrier. That's Jaden. Oh, no. Are you kidding me? Dallin Horton. Oh, my goodness. On the field. He is writhing in pain as Jaden. Yeah, but oh. a face mask oh, will be the call. Thank yeah, he'll you. be all right, I it's think. It's a cramp. Oh, thank goodness. Praise you. Oh, man. Three, two ACLs, man. Two. Yep. You do. You you just kind of you kind of hold your breath every yeah. time that he goes down. Well, they'll get Sulphur Springs for the face mask as little zone read there run by Reese Hicks. Gets a nice gain on the play, but my goodness, I mean, it's uh, – they'll mark this penalty. Should be an automatic first down. That's going to really bail Jacksonville out big time. After that 16-yard fumble, or actually snap – yeah. Fumble recovery. Yep. Jaden is uh, – he is cramped up. Yeah, he's – And you expect that. I'm surprised we haven't seen more cramping tonight. Credit to the coaching – I mean, the that, training staff. That's exactly what I was just about to say. Matt, we talked about uh, Jason Kraus giving the, uh, giving the advice to the fans this week. Well, he has obviously had his staff working with the players to make sure they were ready as well as far as yeah. hydration. And that Jaden has got that. I mean, you, you know, J Jaden, when you go down like that, it just, 30, Carthage, you know, his dad, Mark Boyd, the great Jacksonville defensive back in the early 2000s. Yep. That, uh, that's his dad. You know, they're just like taking a deep breath when that happens. That's right. First down, Jacksonville. So McCown back to work this time. He'll try to flip one out. It's incomplete. As he was looking for Hicks. Yeah, and Hicks, Hicks thankfully, just wasn't, he wasn't prepared. He wasn't yeah. ready to get the ball. He just kind of. You notice he kind of lazed lackadaisically, just kind of like slid before the ball was snapped. Yeah, well, you can do that laterally. Thankfully, he had headed up field because that was one that almost could have been. Yeah, I, I worried there for a second that that was a lateral and a live ball. Forward pass incomplete. Second ten. So now the handoff is to Hicks, and he's got all oh. kinds of room to run. Oh, man. Turf Monster got him, but not before he picks up the Bill McGray Ford first down. Man, does he have a burst. Wow. That's the first time I've really seen that burst. So now Jacksonville with Hicks again. He puts his hand to the turf and tries to make something of it. Not a whole lot there. Mares will check in for him. Give him a little breather as they try to get Jaden Boyd. He is sucking down the Gatorade right now, man. Pedialyte, whatever he's drinking. About a yard gain, second nine for Jacksonville. Two left, one right. Go the receivers. Throws to the left side. It's caught. It's Taylor. He makes one man miss. Another 30, 20, 15, 10, 5. You can forget about it. Touchdown, Jermaine Taylor. 55 yards for the score. On the little screen pass. And Jermaine Tedder makes a fantastic move. And boy, I thought they had him at the five, Aaron, and he just tiptoes in to the end zone for the score. And Jacksonville reclaims the lead. Right at the end of the third quarter. Wow. Big time, big time run by the D1 Division I recruited receiver. Jermaine Taylor making it happen. So now, uh, excuse me, Jesus Nunez on to add the extra point. Extra points brought to you by our friends at Neighbors Coffee. The kick is up on the way and good. So at the end of three, Woo! we've got a wild one. Jacksonville 16, Sulphur Springs 14. We need to catch our breath. We'll take a short break and come back. This is Fighting Indian Football on JISD Live. When life throws you a curveball, give it to the guy who can knock it out of the park. A high drive to right, sending Ludwig back. It's gone! Micah Hoffpower. Call Micah Hoffpower at Texas Farm Bureau for all of your life, auto, and home insurance needs. Since 1953, Hubert Glass Oil has been serving East Texas the finest automotive fuels and lubricants. Huber Glass Oil Company, the clear solution for your business.
And we're back live as we get set to start the fourth quarter of play here at the Historic Tomato Bowl. Jacksonville has regained the lead. 16 to 14 with another fighting Indian scoring drive summer. Here's Todd once again. Todd? It was a seven play drive, covered 72 yards, ending with a touchdown, putting the Indians up 16 to 14. Boy, it was an ugly start to that drive, wasn't it? I mean, that 16 yard loss on the bat, on the snap that McCown didn't handle. And then you got the, the gift face mask penalty on Reese Kicks. And then 55 yards for the score to Jermaine. So now a high pop kick, far side, fair caught. All right, guys, it's time for your trivia question of the week. Right, Please, nobody go. text me if you're hearing this. Let's We're go. not doing that. What high school in the state of Texas has the highest all-time winning percentage? This is multiple choice. Is it A, South Lake Carroll, B, West Orange Stark, C, Highland Park, D, Austin Westlake? The highest all-time winning percentage. Which of those four schools? Think about it. Let's run these plays, and we'll come back to that. So Driver and the Wildcats back to work. Two receivers on the left side. One back handoff straight ahead. Out over the 30. Man, these wide receivers Luke. and DBs are getting after they it over sure here on this are. side. <laughs> like they WWE sure going on. Five yard gain. So the band right behind me, Aaron, doing their job on Sulfur on this end right here, playing it up strong. Trying to create a little noise. Yep, 11.30 and counting here in the fourth quarter. As this time the handoff to D. Rose Luke driver. is faked and it's driver on the keeper and he is deep in the Jacksonville territory. Man, zone read kill All him. the way down to the Jacksonville 30 with a big first down. Yeah, that, Goes Brady that's, driver. That's a bad read by one of the Jacksonville linebackers right there. You've got to see him pull that ball and not cave. He gets around the edge, unsealed. Huge gain for driver of Sulphur Springs. Gets them all the way down to the Jacksonville 30 yard line, first down. Uh. Well, we knew Sulphur Springs could get a lot of yards in a hurry. Yeah. They have definitely lived up to that mantra, huh? They sure have. Now driver takes the snap, hands off right side, end around. And, and knocked out of bounds near the marker and you've got to watch the extracurriculars of your See, Jacksonville. There's another, I think they're gonna get Carson Shoemaker. Yeah, but again, and again, Matt, I, I, I think this goes back to, if you tightened up early as the, the officiating crew, maybe this wouldn't be happening. That's just not uh, very smart on Carson Schumacher's point. I mean, even yeah, though. Yeah, no, that's absolutely yeah. right. I mean, and that's speculation on my part. Yeah, I agree. You know? I know you're right. I mean, if you tighten up on that, that stuff stops. But you, you can't do that. You can't reach up and grab a guy by the face mask, rip his helmet off. That's what he did. And he got penalized for it. So this puts the ball first down and goal at the Jacksonville 10-yard line for Sulphur Springs. You know, you, you just you – just, Put your team in a bad position by making a, I can't call it anything else, guys. It, it's just a dumb play. Lack of composure. So 10.35 and counting here in the fourth quarter. Selfer is going to take a timeout. And we'll take it with him. You're listening and watching Fighting Indian Football on JISD Live. As ETMC joins the UT Health family, we're bringing a new vision of healthcare to East Texas. Where the brightest minds in academics and medicine work together to treat the most complex health challenges and improve lives. Where access to world-class medicine and cutting edge technology will bring health, hope, and a brighter tomorrow. We are UT Health East Texas, advancing healthcare together. Dr. Darwin Dar and his staff at Dar Chiropractic specialize in family chiropractic care, exercise rehab, digital x-rays, nutrition and weight loss programs, decompression, and chiropractic wellness care. Located down the street from the tomato bowl, Dar Chiropractic. They can help you feel better. Hey. 
And we are back live here at the Historic Tomato Bowl. 10 28 to go in regulation. All right, guys, give me some of your answers. Give me your answer here for the high school that has the highest all time winning percentage South Lake Carroll, West Orange Stark, Highland Park, or Austin Westlake. Aaron. I will go with West Orange Stark, the Mustangs. Okay. I I'm going to go Highland Park. Todd. Austin Westlake. West Orange Stark, Aaron got it. All right. Uh, they have won 80%, 79.7% of their games. Can you imagine 80% of their games wow. they've won historically? West Orange Stark, all-time highest winning percentage. All right, first and goal now for Sulphur Springs. The Jacksonville 10. Two right, one left. Go the receivers now. Man in motion from the right to the left. He gets the handoff, the jet sweep. Golly bum, what is going does on here? a pretty here? good job staying home. There's... Boy, more after the whistle looks like. So yeah, that's that's. I was able to follow that exchange right there, and number 54, who's leaving the field right now, he was blocking downfield on Kincaid, and when the whistle was blown, he was still blocking, and Kincaid just turned around and he lost his helmet. Yep. You got to stop on the whistle. Yeah, that's Jeff Stevenson, the sophomore. So he had to leave the field. And he'll miss a play. Kincaid was just disengaging. Yeah, he was. Trips left, one right, go the receivers. Driver gonna go to the right, back shoulder. Offsides, offsides Jacksonville. Gotta watch the ball, yeah, defensive that's... tackles. Gotta watch the ball, DTs. So they'll stay second down, and they'll move it to the five. So here in the second half, the penalties are starting to add up on Jacksonville. And all kinds of penalties like offsides, face masks, personal foul. You know, the ones that you don't think when you do them. Yeah. <laughs> so now Driver and the Wildcats sitting about the Jacksonville five. Look to punch this in and take the lead once again in a back and forth ball game. And it will be Driver and he will score. Yeah, just old fashioned stack play. Looks like Tim Tebow going through there, getting behind everybody and punching it in from five yards out. So Sulphur Springs takes the lead back 20 to 16. Still 918 remaining, plenty of time obviously. Back and forth, this game is gone. And Sulphur Springs, a team with eight offensive and, and five defensive starters back from last year, picked second in their district. This year, prognosticators, I'm saying, picked them second behind uh, Anna. So now it looks like Sulphur Springs has kept their offense in the game and they're gonna try to push this lead out to six. Instead of the five, smart move here by the Sulphur Springs Wildcats, I think. Yeah, because then, then then a touchdown doesn't give Jacksonville the lead necessarily. Right. Got to make the extra point. So Driver will keep again, and he will scamper in for the two. So, Still okay. Yeah. But 9-18 to go here in regulation. Score now, Sulphur Springs 22, Jacksonville 16. We'll take a short break and come back. This is Fighting Indian Football on JISD Live. Dr. Folden, Dr. Westbrook, Dr. Stocks, and their dental team at All Smiles provide a wide range of dental services. This includes cleanings, fillings, crowns, bridges, implants, and cosmetic dental care. Call and schedule your appointment at 903-586-0741. I'm Matt Montgomery. For over 40 years, my business has helped people manage their money and organize their financial life. I'm a registered investment advisor with the state of Texas and chartered financial consultant. Whether you need portfolio management or comprehensive financial planning, I can help you. Call me for a free consultation. Since 2004, Legends Old Time Burger Cafe has been the home of Jacksonville's best old-fashioned hamburgers. Hand-battered chicken strips, chicken fried steak, fries, and onion rings are the best around. Legends, home of Jacksonville's best old-fashioned hamburger. And we're back live at the Historic Tomato Bowl, downtown Jacksonville. 9-18 to go in regulation. Sulphur Springs leading now by a score of 22-16 in a ball game that is going back and forth 
with another Sulphur Springs scoring drive summary. Here's Todd. Todd? It was a six-play drive, covered 73 yards, ending with a touchdown, putting Sulphur Springs back up 22-16. to 16. And Jacksonville going to have to try to answer here. And this will be a touchback to get things started. Don't forget, we'll be naming our Bone Crusher hit of the game, sponsored by Dark Chiropractic. Also, the play of the game, sponsored by Congratulations. And Austin Banks sponsoring the offensive and defensive players of the game for Jacksonville. We'll be naming those at the end of tonight's ball game. We appreciate all our sponsors making this possible on our maiden voyage on JISDlive.com. And it has been a lot of fun. Yeah. Great pregame experience. Glad we got to have Dr. Ben Peacock with us and our new setup. And a little warm, but uh, hey, Matt, you're used to it. Oh, yeah. I can get used to that. Here's Jacksonville at their own 25. So the Indians right back to work. Handoff straight ahead. Maris. And number 14, D.D. Maris. Maris goes out over the 25, about the 27, as he, as the Indians look to recapture the lead as we go under nine minutes in the ball game. Look, Brady, oh, don't snap the ball. <laughs> He's looking at the sideline. I just don't want to see that snap yep. come back. Two right, one left go the receivers for McCown. This time the handoff again is to Myers, and he is Maris. a big burst oh, up no. the middle at the 40. Ball comes out. Still loose, but now Sulphur Springs looks like they're on it. Let's see who comes up. This is a battle. Jacksonville's and got Jacksonville's it. Jacksonville's got it back. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, the officials pointing Jacksonville football. Yeah, they did. They already made that signal, so. And, you know, I, I, I mean, that, they got to stop that. Sulphur Springs is coming in and arguing. And, oh, my goodness. Well now, Jacksonville football. Yeah. Truthfully, I thought Mayors, I thought his knee was down. Yeah. I thought his I, knee was down when the ball came out. But it now looks like. You've got a Sulphur Springs Well, injury. you've got a Sulphur Springs player down, so. He'll be attended to by the training staff, and they were out there in a hurry. Well, this will push the football out to the 50. But he's up. Yep. Good hustle downfield. Didn't see which Jacksonville offensive player made the fumble recovery because it was such a scrum. And I guarantee I, I that ball. I think that Trevor ball, Arrington came in there and, yeah, and got a hand on it and kind of came up with it. Yeah, I think it changed hands a couple of times when it was down on the ground. <laughs> That's the way that works. So here comes Jermaine Taylor checking into the offensive huddle. Jason Holman gathering his defense up right now. He's having a really, what you'd call a defensive coordinator because that's what Jason did at Chapel Hill, Lufkin. He was the DC and he's having one of those kind of conversations with his players and apparently they like it. They're coming out of that huddle clapping. Yeah. He just challenged them. So first down, as Maris will check out of the backfield, and Jaden Boyd was recovered from that cramp that he had, and he's back in the backfield. McCown takes a snap, pitch to Boyd, right side. Let's see if he can spin out of one tackle, and he is slung down. Not even close. So it's gonna be a loss on the play. Second 12 now. Boyd still now he's kind of crimping up just, just a little bit. They'll check out. Reese Hicks is in. Boy, it's a good thing Jacksonville yeah. has those three running backs tonight. It huh? sure is. Yeah, this is a night where you need all the help you can get back there. And McCown fakes a handoff to Hicks. Now sets his ah. feet, throws. Brady just incomplete as he it just, was low. Not a good throw. Yeah, looking for Taylor. Yeah, he is a great route by Jermaine Taylor. Push the defender down the field, the corner cut was open, the ball just bounced right in front of him. Ah. Looked like Brady was gonna take a shot downfield. Had a nice little pump fake and then he just shorted it. So, so now, third and 12. If you're Jacksonville, you'd love to keep the chains moving here. And you, you don't wanna give the ball back with just under eight minutes to go. They can milk the clock and well, if they get another score that puts it away. 
Oh, no. Uh, this snap gets away from McCown. He picks it up, sets his feet, heaves downfield. It's caught. It's a big <laughs> first down of Bill McCray Ford. First Jermaine down Taylor. Taylor. Unbelievable. Holy moly. That's what you call improvisation. Bad snap. Yeah. McCown gets it, and he leads him across the field. I mean, Jermaine Taylor was on the right hash mark, and yeah, he, sure he threw was. it to the Came left hash mark. The way and he just ran over it. Across. So now Jacksonville in business. Flag. Reese Hicks. Flag is down as Hicks Offsides. is inside the 20, but we'll see when the dust settles Ooh, this. on the flag. Let's see the call here. Of course, when you get a flag in this game, it takes 15 minutes just to that's, get it sorted out. That's right. It takes these guys forever. Let's go, man. Let's go. Look, well, well, I mean, Matt, he's just you, slowly. Look. Yeah, he's taking his time to come over and explain the situation to Jason Holman. and. He's, they don't get, they're, not getting, they're not getting paid by the hour. He's signaling offsides on the defense. Yeah, and so this is so where you want to you you take the play. Yeah, no, you want to take the play. But take the play. Yeah. yeah. Instead of first and five, I'll take second and three. Yep. So Ryan Walker in the ball game at the H back position, and we haven't mentioned him enough. He, he's doing a nice job getting some kick out blocks. Yeah, he sure is. He's we keeping. Were, we were wait a minute. So Jacksonville that. looks like the five they're the going to take the five. Down. Yep. Good call, Todd. They're going to keep the down. Now that I think about that, that's that's the smarter move right here because you get to keep it down for two yards. Yeah. That's it. So keep take one, take it, make it first and five. Offsides indicated against the Wildcats. Repeat first down, first down and five. So now a little high snap, but it's brought down all right. Handoff is to Hicks. He makes one man miss and another. And he's down near the 15. Just fighting his way. I mean, really should only had about a yard. He picked up three. Nice run. Tough run. Second down and two. Clock goes under seven in the fourth. Now the handoff again to Hicks, and again, right into the line he goes. I'm waiting to see a helmet fly out of there. <laughs> so yeah. That's what we've seen all night. Oh, I know it. So he's going to be short of the first down by just about a, oh, man, almost the length of the football will be third down. So Hicks is checking out. Who's checking in? It's Boyd. Yeah, Jaden again, and. So third down in about a quarter of a yard, half yard. You got to get just right at the nine yard line and the ball's between the nine and the 10. I mean, excuse me, the 14 and the 15 and the officials are going to take a timeout here and measure. I don't think he got it, but this is a good break to take. Right here, man. Right here. Jacksonville. You punch this in, obviously, uh, Jesus Nunez extra point gives you the lead. So, hope the momentum can keep going here. We'd like to see Bill McCray Ford first down out of this. Let's see what the measurement is. It's closer than I thought it was. It's short by about a half yard. That's about right. Yep. Okay. Well, he stretched it out. I, so, it's about foot. So, third down. You got Boyd in the game. Don't do that toss stuff to the outside. Just go straight. Yeah, you just you, straight ahead. You take Boyd right at him. Just a little zone block. Get right in that seam and get it in there. In the gap, as they say. So 6.05 to go, third and very short. So it's it's a Wildcat with Boyd. Yep, we'll see. Oh, gosh, we moved. Good. Yep, yep. Oh I'll move gosh. the Indians back. That's 
a painful penalty yeah, right there. Yeah, that's a tough procedure yep. call to take. So let's see if they bring Brady back in here at the quarterback position instead of the Wildcat. Looks like they're keeping it. They've moved Jermaine in there as a blocker. Ryan Walker's a blocker. They're staying with yep, the Wildcat. They're staying with the Wildcat or the Indians. We'll see what Boyd can come up with. He's got a nice burst down inside the 10. First down. He's got the Bill McCray forward. First down. Yeah, baby. Well, when you're confident. Yeah, when you're confident in your package, your Wildcat package oh. now, Jaden coming off. Oh, in man. a lot of pain. Now he's grabbing his, what, I don't know what, he's hurt. Well, he's hopping on one foot, so I don't know if he's got, could be a calf. Yeah. He's dehydrated, there's no doubt. Yeah. That's what it looks like. So first down for Jacksonville at the 11. I can still get a first down here. Here comes Hicks. Hicks, the look, and inside. Yep. The five he goes. They're just gonna run it down your, no, oh, ball, ball comes no, out. No, you got to think a knee's down, Matt. He's down. You got to think. He was down. Surely, surely. Oh, my goodness. He was so down. Surely Reese Hicks is down. I mean, the, the, I mean, he stopped the line of scrimmage. Yeah, yeah. No way. He sure did. Let's see. No way. Wow. Yeah, they're going to give Sulphur Springs the ball. That is absolutely horrible. Wow, tough that break. That is horrible. He was, the forward motion was stopped at the two. Yeah. I mean, at the two, I mean, you blow the no wh whistle. You blow the whistle there. That's you blow what, that's the whistle when he stops, and yeah. they didn't. Golly. Man. And you got to think. You know, an instant replay would overturn that if there were such a thing in high school football. Well, these guys don't know what what forward motion is. When you stop forward motion, when the pile stops, you blow the whistle. Result of the turnover, first and ten. And so, yeah, a touchback. They say the result of the turnover. So five minutes. 15 seconds to go if you're the Jacksonville defense. You've got to just get out there and do your job, but man, it's hard. So Brady Driver and the Sulphur Springs Wildcats back to work. The handoff and the right side, they go. As Ro D. Rose Luke on the carry again. Another helmet comes off for Sulphur Springs. Man. They need to look I, at their chin straps. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think know. they're wearing any. It's like the old Willie Mays where he would wear a, a batting helmet that was two sizes too big just so it would make him look faster. Yeah. That's like the 15th time somebody's had oh to leave the game. Oh, my gosh. So Second Sulphur, and eight. Yep. Sulphur Springs won't get in a hurry. Here. So if you're Jacksonville, oh, you've gosh. got to make some stops with Brady Driver going to burst his way for a big first down. That's the third zone read that he has run tonight for big yardage. Yep. Tough play for Jacksonville to defend tonight. Well. Uh, if I could have, would have, should have. Yep. Absolutely. So Jacksonville facing now Silver Springs first down. They're on 37, 429 to go. Indians in desperate need of a stop. And the handoff straight ahead. Another big gainer. Now if you're Jacksonville, you've just got to disengage once these tackles are made. Look, surprise, there's another helmet oh, on the yeah. field. And the, he's pleading with the official as the Sulphur Springs offensive lineman. He's saying, hey, my helmet just doesn't come off automatically. Something's happening. That Fighting official, is, he's not going to call anything, I can tell you. The yeah. guy in the white hat, he is listless. I'm sorry. The other guys are calling the game. He's just kind of, like I said earlier, 
Got a Jacksonville injury down, another cramp looks like. Yep, this is what you'd expect this point of the evening. Been playing this long and yeah, long hot ball get, game. Get dehydrated. So they're still working on Jaden. He is trying to get as much fluid as possible in with stretching out that leg. Those cramps are painful. So Kincaid for Jacksonville with the cramp coming yep. off on his own power, but he's uh, he's struggling. He's Running like Festus there, kind of limping. Trying to get that calf cramp that he's got worked out. One minute, 18 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Carthage 30, Kilgore 27. Wow, that's a battle over at Ari St. John's if How you heard that, that score. 30-27, yeah. yeah. Carthage leading Kilgore. About a minute to go in the ball game. So 4-12 in this one. And Jacksonville defensively, is somebody's got to make a play. Create the turnover. Make the tackle. Somebody else come in and get the turnover. So now, first down, ball sitting at the, just over the 40 of Sulphur Springs. Handoff straight ahead. And all the way down to about the 47 this time. Goes Jefferson. Man, the, the flow of this game is just really weird. Yeah. So now what? But the, the, the play is stopped. Officials are talking. Is there a flag? Yes. Yeah, there okay. was. Over on the other side? There's yeah. A, there's a flag. I think it's going to be on us for personal foul. Yep, you got it. Yep, that's the call. Personal foul indicated. They yeah. saw the end of the play. They threw us down, but then they're calling it on us. You know, Jacksonville goes on to lose this game. This is going to be one of those ones you you got to look in the mirror tomorrow and say, okay, did did I did some of the stuff that I did those mental breakdowns? Did that cause us maybe not to win this ball game? Emotions and keeping your composure. That's what Jason Holman's been preaching to these guys for three weeks, ever since camp started. Two receivers on the left, one on the right, one back. It Fumble! Snap gets away. Driver just dives back on it, back at midfield. You know, you got to believe it. Again, we've talked about how hot it is down there, the humidity, and you've seen some of these snaps just go awry. And, you know, a guy snaps it back 15 times in a row and it's perfect, and then all of a sudden there's a yep. dribbler. Yep. I mean, his hand's wet. Well, it's we haven't had rain in over a month, but that doesn't mean it's not wet down there because right. this humidity. Loss on the part play brings up second down and about 20. So we'll go down under the three-minute mark as Got driver fakes a handoff, keeps. Jacksonville misses one tackle, then another. Driver's got a first down, a whole lot more. He slung down. Flag. Flag comes in. Looks like he might have been, he might have grabbed it, might have got a face mask there. The so, way he was spun down, not exactly sure. So it was Didi Maris who came in and had a shot. He read the zone read perfectly. He had the key. He stayed with the quarterback. Yeah, he, he sure did. He whiffed on the tackle. Yep. Just whiffed. Got to lock up. So now let's see what the penalty is to be added to the end of the play. What is that? Can what call is him that? For a horse collar tackle. That was horse collar. Yeah. Mm. 
I'm speechless at these penalties. Yeah, you have a few of them, and you say. No, it, no, get out. Don't. Got we had somebody trying to sub right there. Yeah. Good grief. No, we got to jump. Back up. Back up. You're okay. Ball's loose. What Might have blown the play, did. So Jordan Dorsey jumped right there, and you can get back. He just kind of crouched like, oh, no. I'm off side. No, get back. You're okay. <laughs> They're not going to blow the whistle if you jump. Now we got another Jacksonville player down. This game has really disintegrated, guys. Penalties, injuries. Referees that walk like they're on the walking dead. I mean, they're slow. I will say this, they have tightened up the ball game on their calls. Yeah, but I mean, it's too little too late. <laughs> I mean, I wish they'd have started the, started the game like that. It wouldn't be so chippy right now. But it's better than them not just, you know, never calling anything. At least they've tightened up. You yeah, know, that's, it's, a, that's, it's not referee one-on-one. -on -one. You don't do that. But if you don't do it, it's really bad. It's worse. So tighten it up. You just got to start earlier. I mean, when the whistle blows to start the game. So stay with us coming up at the end of the game. Uh, as Matt mentioned, we'll have our post-game awards. I'd like to shout out our sponsors again. We'll have the Dara Chiropractic Bone Crusher hit of the game, the congratulations play of the game, the Austin Bank Offensive and Defensive Players of the game. A big thank you to all of our sponsors that allow us to bring you Fighting Indian Football here on JISD Live this year. Glad to Glad to be here. Glad to be on this platform, Matt. Absolutely. Appreciate Lee Trailer and Superintendent Brad Stewart and them all getting this, getting it done and getting us all together. It's going to be great. Great partnership. Right now, the Fighting Indians needing to make a stop. Driver rolling to his right. Flag. Now back to the left. Flag comes in. Oh, man. We'll wait and get the call. Another Here's flag. Another, flag. another flag. Yep. So we'll see. There's a another flag. fighting Indian thrown to the ground and another that third flag. So could have offsetting penalties. Who knows? What the heck is going on? Like I said, the game's just really deteriorated to the point where it's just not. It's just not a football game. It's not competitive. It's just like when the plate when the balls. Snap, you make a run, and there's going to be a penalty. That's not football. You can't keep playing out of control like that, both teams. I mean, you know, it's 10.34 right now, and, you know, it. <laughs> you look at your watch and you go, okay, we, we, we're, we're, we're going to be pushing, you know, 3.40. There's no reason for 12-minute quarter games to be that long unless you got two teams that are just penalizing themselves to death. Yep, that's right. I mean, I'm not taking medicine or anything, and you know. This quarter feels like it's been as long as the whole game. It does. <laughs> no, good observation, no doubt. First half flew by. The first half was quick. It the was third great. quarter wasn't like overly slow, but the fourth quarter has crawled by. Well, I mean, like this conference right here, it's been going on for about three minutes. Yeah. So, of course, you had multiple flags, and you got to go in the order and determine what happened first, where did it happen, and where are we eating after the game? I think they threw four flags. Yeah, there's four. <laughs> well, at this rate – that choice will be easy. They'll be going to see our friends at Whataburger because that's going to be the only place open. It's true. <laughs> exactly. I mean, where the football is anyway, it, it, it's only going to – it's not going to be the penalty yards. If it's against Jacksonville, it's going to be just whether they get a first down out of it or not because it'd be half the distance. Now, look where the referee is right now with the ball. 
Look at that. Is that where – look, see where the umpire is? Yep. Where's he – he's just walking around. Look. Okay, we here's – all right, we got personal foul. Personal foul on Sulphur, Sulphur Springs. Dead ball. Personal foul. Personal foul on Jacksonville. Okay. Another personal foul. Personal foul again on Jacksonville. Jacksonville. Yep. Another personal foul. No, ejection. They ejected one of our players. Who would they? Who did they eject? Was it Jermaine? Yeah, I saw Jermaine coming out of the game. Yeah, it may very I well think have he's been. He's sitting on the bench. Not sure. Right 20, now. I thought it was 24. Okay. Hinton. Oh, so, yeah. Okay, good. Because he need Jermaine on offense. Well, he was just taking all of his gear off as he was coming off the uh, field. That doesn't surprise so. me. Come on now, keep your stuff on. So now Brady Driver going to keep, go right up the Good middle. tackle Big by Miles. Big hit, yeah, Michael Miles, our spotlight player with a spotlight hit. He doesn't make that tackle, it's a score. And a nail in the coffin, game over. Just want to throw it out there, that might be a good candidate for the, the arc higher practice yeah. bone crusher yeah. in the game. Yeah. That's it. I had maybe one other in mind, but I think that may have just jumped it. Yep. That is it. Like I said, he's going to score if Miles doesn't that, make that hit. Yeah, that's right. You, that is a must-make tackle. We'll watch it again right here with Driver. Yep, snap to Driver, try to take it up the middle. And they're just chewing clock up. They don't care. Now Jacksonville's going to take a timeout. Yep. Stop the clock, Ray Dell. Stop the clock, Ray. No. There should be 140 on there. Yeah, it ran off about seven seconds there. Jason. Jason. Hey, there should be 140 on there. So. <laughs> He's got it now. Yeah. That is the first time in a while, Matt, I think that we've seen you in a huddle. Yeah, well. But, hey, somebody's got to do I, it. I don't think Jason was – I think he was so focused on what they're going to call defensively that those seven seconds, he just – he didn't. He wasn't watching it. Yeah. So, let's see what happens here if they get those seven back up there. I mean, because he clearly called timeout at 140. Now, I, I could go with – 139, maybe even 138. I could go with that. There's a little delay right there, but not not that many right there. Yeah, so 139 back on there the clock. Yep. Thank you. There you go. Good. And, and you know, in the timekeeper's defense, where he's sitting, and Jason Holman is on this far side on the left, and he's reaching over, he's saying timeout, and the field judge is over here, and he's – sometimes you don't see all that. That's right, yep. It's easy to see in the middle of the field. So 139 remaining, third down and goal at the Jacksonville three. Somebody in blue has got to step up and make a play. Tight set. Uh, Straight ahead. Touchdown. The Wildcat touchdown. Driver from three. And so with that, Sulphur Springs jumps out to the 28-16 lead. Now the extra point attempt. Extra points brought to you by our friends at Neighbors Coffee in downtown Jacksonville. The kick on the way, and it's good. So. With 1.33 to go here in the ballgame, score now, Sulphur Springs 29, Jacksonville 16. We'll take a short break and come back. This is Jacksonville football on JISD Live. Gene Bromelow, class of 66, and his daughter Ann Farmer proudly support Jacksonville Athletics. Come on over to the South Jackson Dairy Queen and get one of their world-famous blizzards. Dairy Queen, where happy tastes good. Tonight's game statistics are sponsored by Randy Gorham, CPA. 
Randy Gorham, CPA, the source for your accounting and income tax needs since 1984. For the first day of school, for the last day of work, for the satisfaction of a job well done, for the ideas that change the world, for good times, for not so good times. For her future and hers and his. For serving our customers and connecting communities. We're here with you for good. Austin Bank, with you for good. And we're back live here at the historic Tomato Bowl, 133 to go. In regulation, scoring out Sulphur Springs 29, Jacksonville 16, and Matt, unfortunately, that may do it. Yeah, I mean, 133 remaining. I mean, you, you know, you can run this kickoff back and then get an onside kick. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you know, you never crazier know. Crazier things have happened. Sure. You got to play to the end of the whistle. Got to play the whistle. Ends the game. Yep. It's They're a high gonna, kickoff, yep. far side. No fair catch, though, but only a short return out of it. That's Maris. As Didi tried to make something happen, he comes up <laughs> he a little bit hobbled. He doesn't fair catch anything. <laughs> no. <laughs> he's not built that way. He's, uh, yeah, he's coming off a little gingerly yeah. as well. So you get a big strike right here, obviously. I mean, you got to, you know, Sulphur Springs you, is going to be looking for that. Yeah, and I mean, you've had one, obviously, you know, that yeah. Brady can do that. He can hook up with Jermaine Taylor, for example. So Hicks will check in. You've got Trevor. You got Zeke wide left. Dials Jamar Taylor wide right. So here we go. Need a big time play here to have a shot. God dog it. Snap gets away. Hicks picks it up. He's going to have some room to run. Is Hicks? He's got to get out of bounds. He does, and he's hit out of bounds. Surely. Yeah, they didn't call it. Uh, no call. Wow. I don't know what's going on. I mean, that was a – Brady just – I don't know what – Yeah. If he's not looking the ball in or if he's looking away and looking at the deep – I don't know. I mean, that ball hit him right in the hands. Not sure. So, two receivers each way for Brady. Snaps good. He's got a little bit of time. Dropped. Just throws – off the hands of Taylor and just looking where he was going to run. Yeah, running without the ball. I really like that tunnel screen. I mean, it's worked really well for Jacksonville tonight. And they've got the cats that can run it. They just got to catch it. All kinds of whistles blowing down there. Yeah, I'm not sure what that is all about. Official now. Well, they're going to move. Is there a pen, <laughs> was there a penalty called against Sulphur Springs? Or no. It was the ball spotted Just in the wrong spot. a bad spot. spot. Yeah. He, had, he didn't have say. it. Look at that. Even our receiver's not lined up. A handoff to Hicks. A big burst and a Bill McCray Ford first down out to midfield. All right, get, get up to the line of scrimmage. They stop the clock. Let's go. Let's go. Like the call to get the first down, but you got to be ready to go with the next play. Yeah, Up so tempo. So from Springs, not set. If you're Jacksonville, you've got to be ready to go. So here we go with McCown. Steps up, sets his feet, fires. It's intercepted. And that will do it. Minute four to go in the ball game. Sulphur Springs can run it out. Yeah, just not sure where... That, that ball really came off Brady's hand really awkwardly. He was looking for Dials. And Dials cut toward the middle of the field, and Brady was throwing it toward the sideline. And I'm not sure if a Brady, when he was releasing the ball, went, uh-oh, and that's why the ball came off funny, trying to pull it back. So Brady with the pick. As you said, Aaron, that'll end it with Selfer just taking victory, Neil. Uh, tough, man. I mean, you know, you up 9-7 at the half, and the end of the third quarter, it's looking good. You take the lead back 16-14. 
So you have victory formation for Brady Driver in Sulphur Springs and Jacksonville. Lose a tough one here. And and there's a lot to work on and a lot you could say about this ball game, but the way that the way that it was called, that might be part of it. Uh, but that's not the whole story by any stretch. No, not at all. I mean, I mean, Jacksonville coming into the game, we already talked about how they weren't even picked to be in this game. I mean, Sulphur's going to dominate them. But, boy, you know, you got to give Jacksonville credit. They came to play. They were well coached tonight. Uh, I love the play calling by, uh, you know, Jason McClendon, the offensive coordinator. The defense played great in spots. Sulphur Springs just uh, just kind of came on there, and Jacksonville lost their composure a little bit there in the third and fourth quarter. And that decided, in my opinion. And so with that, it will go final here tonight at Tomato Bowl. Sulphur Springs 29, Jacksonville 16. So the Fighting Indians will regroup, head up Highway 69 next week to take on the Wildcats of White House. But tonight, it's the Wildcats of Sulphur Springs who will head back to Hopkins County with the win. It's a tough ball game all around, Matt, but lots of positives as well. I mean, there, there were bright spots oh, yeah. for sure. Absolutely. I mean, good grief. They, Jacksonville came out and played so well in that first half. You, like I said, 9-7 lead at the half and tackled well, ran the ball well. Uh, the passing game was clicking. Not near as many drops as I saw in the scrimmages. Guys were holding on the ball. Had a few, but not too many. Third and fourth quarter, it looked like Jacksonville kind of kind of ran out of gas a little bit, and Sulphur Springs got their second win. Then, of course, there were some tough calls, too, where Jacksonville lost their composure, got some personal foul penalties. And that's just one of those things when you're building a program like Jason Holman's trying to do is that, you know, you, you got to learn from these things. He had some heart-to-heart -heart talks with him. He had one Tuesday with him that, down in Happy Valley that was about 15, 20 minutes, man, of just some, uh, we'll just say some back end chewing, if you want to call it that, and it, about character and composure and working hard and things like, what do you even think about football? You know, it was, it was just about handling yourself as a young man. And I think that's where the game got away from Jacksonville in, on several occasions is they just kind of let their, let their composure get the best of them. Next week, Jacksonville heads to White House. We'll be on the road for the first time to go see the Wildcats. Guys, let's talk about some of our sponsored award winners tonight. First, the Bone Crusher here to the game, sponsored by Dar Chiropractic. If your body needs an adjustment, call Dr. Darwin Dar, great linebacker for Jacksonville back in the day, JHS class of 1984. Dr. Dar is your hometown chiropractor. The Jacksonville Play the Game, sponsored by Congratulations. They can personalize trophies, create special recognition items for banquets. Maybe you want to preserve a special photo or create some signage for your business. Congratulations can do it for you. They're your hometown awards and engraving store. The Jacksonville Play the Game. Jermaine Taylor's 55-yard bubble screen touchdown pass. What a great run after the catch from Brady McCown. Jermaine Taylor with the Congratulations Play of the Game. Jacksonville's Offensive Player of the Game, sponsored by Austin Bank, your community bank, locally owned and operated since 1900. Offensive Player of the Game, Brady McCown threw for well over 200 yards tonight. Uh, under pressure sometimes, got rid of the ball, did a nice job uh, connecting with the receivers. Brady McCown, Offensive Player of the Game. Defensive Player of the Game, it's hard not to pick this guy. He got the bone crusher here to the game. He was all over the field, leading tackler last year. Leading in this ball game, junior Michael Miles, the Austin Bank defensive player of the game. We want to thank Dark Chiropractic. Congratulations and Austin Bank for sponsoring all of our post game awards. So now with the Randy Gorham post game statistics. Hey, Todd, I'm just going to see if you're ready. Jason Holman's still talking to his team. When he gets ready, we'll catch him. Yeah, Todd's, uh, Todd's got ready. the mic down. He's ready to go. Says, I've been ready. I was born ready. <laughs> so, 
Tough Stuff one come to up quick with the new app. Yeah. So I was ready when it hit zero. There you go. Tough one tonight, guys. Jacksonville falling 29-16 to to the Sulphur Springs Wildcats. But lots of positives uh, in this one. But, Todd, let's break down those final numbers. Individual rushing stats. Reese Hicks finished 14 carries for 75 yards. Uh, Maris had nine carries for 69, and Boyd had 11 carries for 54 yards. Yeah, so that was something we looked at at the half, talked about the balance between those guys, and really that kind of continued through the rest of the ball game. So mm -hmm. certainly a positive to take away. It yep. is. In passing, Brady finished 16 completions on 32 attempts, 225 yards, two touchdowns, and the one interception right there at the end. Yeah, unfortunately, that interception just came at a time when he really kind of was was pressing because he had to. Uh, but but other than that, a great night for him. Obviously, our our offensive player of the game and, and well deserved for the junior. Yeah, and, receiving and the yeah. leading receiver was Jermaine Taylor, seven catches for 177 yards, two touchdowns. Uh, I've got Jaden Boyd with two catches for 17. Zeke Whitaker, two catches for 14. Uh, Brendan Richards, one catch for 14. Drew Dials, one for four. Ryan Walker, one catch for one yard. And that's all the receivers. That's about it. And, and Todd, I got I to gotta mention, too, and Matt, you said it as well. Of course, we didn't call Ryan Walker's name a lot for a lot of, of offensive production numbers, but he played a big part tonight. Oh, absolutely. You know? Yeah, he did. I mean, you talk about we, – we talked about it, how, how – Brady's the kind of guy, you give him some time, he can make plays. And how many of those kick-out blocks and just little chips and things did, did Walker pick up that helped uh, with that with that, that side of production that you don't see on the stat sheet? So. Yeah, that, that H-back position, I mean, it's a fullback that can catch the ball. Yep. I mean, that's basically what it is, and you got to be able to block, but you also got to be able to get in space. He can do that, did a good job. He sure hey, did. I, I, I want to shout out to the offensive line, too. They came into the season just – uh, you know, just inexperienced. People wondering, can they do it? Didn't have, you know, did, had had some some good spots in the scrimmages, but people still had questions. But I thought they played well tonight. I mean, they did a nice job. Um, they had they some, did. We I mean, talked about got, that quite a bit at halftime. Well, yeah. They, when, you, you, when you have three guys, you know, 69 yards, 55 yards, 70 whatever yards. I mean, you yeah, three guys. I mean, that's pretty good. Those big, yeah, those big chunks. That means that offensive line's given. Yeah. Yeah, giving you time and, and letting you make those plays. And so, yeah. Yeah. Let, and those me, get, are, uh, let me get uh, Coach Holman here. Yeah, absolutely. The All Smiles interview with Coach Holman. Matt, send it back down to you. Well, Coach, uh, game got away from you there. 9 7 lead at the half. Second half was just. We had a 9 7 lead. Yeah, I mean, that's what I mean. Y'all had a 9 7 lead at the half. And I'm like, okay, this is looking pretty good. Then you got the lead back 16 14. And, and then, then it just you talk about composure and those things you've been preaching about it, preaching about it. Penalties got you a little bit there at the end. Well, I'll, I'll tell you exactly what I just told them. I do not question our will, our will and our want to yes. win games. I didn't question our effort. I thought we fought our tails off. Yeah. You know, we just got to figure out how, and we got to eliminate the penalties, and we got to elim eliminate the fumble snaps, and you know, the self-destructive parts that we can control. We've got to eliminate. We do that. And we just beat a playoff team. Coach, coming into the game, this was not what a lot of people, you know, that pick games and stuff, That's this is not what they picked. And so what a great showing by your team. Uh, you had three guys. I mean, your, your three-headed monster running game was 79 yards, no, 69 yards, 70-something yards, 55 yards. You had really good balance there. And what about your offensive line? They did a nice job tonight. For a brand new unit, five guys on the field that did not start last year. Yeah. I'm extremely proud of them and their effort. There's no doubt. You know, we're never, ever satisfied with a moral victory. Uh, we want to win. There's no bones about it. But just like I said, I, I don't question our effort. I don't catch question our want to. It's just we just got to figure out the how. Your up-tempo offense really showed well there for a while, Coach. It, 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 it really kicked in. I mean, I know in the coffin scrimmage it worked a little bit, but tonight it looked even better. Well, in the scrimmage format, you're not – you're not able to do some things. It's more controlled, you know, and uh, in the live quarters yeah. we were able to do some. But, yeah, I mean, you know, we had them where we wanted them. We had them more down at times. Just got to eliminate those yeah. crazy plays that end up in a negative for us. Next week you go to White House. They got beat last night. Um, 
talking about getting ready for them this week. How do you build on this game? Even though you didn't win the game, there's so many positive things that happen. How do you build on that? Well, that's exactly what I said. We've got to figure out a way to win. White House is a rival. There's no bones about it. What we cannot do is get, you know, let them get in our heads and affect our play. And that, if we'll play with the effort we have tonight and we'll play it clean, we've got a great opportunity to beat them. Coach, appreciate you visiting with us. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Head Coach Jason Holman on the All Smiles post-game interview. Guys, back up to you. Thanks, Matt. And so that will just about do it here from the historic Tomato Bowl. Once again tonight, Jacksonville coming up just short, but a lot of positives, a lot to, to build on as they get ready to make the short trip up Highway 69 next week and take on the local rival White House Wildcats in a non-district ball game. And, of course, we will bring you every snap. We'll be live with our countdown to kickoff at 640. That game scheduled to kick off at 730 over at Wildcat Stadium. But that will just about wrap it up. So for Todd Travis, Ryan Travis, Matt Montgomery, and Mr. Lee Trailer, this is Aaron Swink saying thanks for watching Fighting Indian Football here on JISD Live. Enjoy your weekend. We'll see you.